Welcome to Snowmobile Sessions Live on YouTube and your favorite podcast platform. We're the number one destination to learn about snowmobiling, network with other sledders, and have an awesome time doing it. We'll meet other snowmobilers that share your passion and show your fan photos along the way. Snowmobile Sessions Live. Enjoy the ride. It's a journey. This episode of Snowmobile Sessions is brought to you by stuff like this. Get your Skidoo branded COVID mask there for around 10 bucks Canadian. That's about $4 US. Get online, stufflikethis.ca slash mask. Go for it now. Meanwhile, in the Snow Sessions Forest. Hey, come on guys, where the hell are they? We have to start the show. Rich, Rich, are you out there? Yeah, man, I can barely see you. Oh, wait, here, I'll come over. Where you at, boy? Oh, hey, Bobby. Uh, Rich buried the assault again. Can you come over here and help me? <laughs> I got you. Let me get that shovel. What are you riding your horse over, Richard? Or Bobby? Are you riding your horse over? <laughs> you know me. <laughs> I did. That, your spring order still hasn't come in yet, I guess, eh? Listen, grab you grab the bumper, I'll grab Classic. the ski. Let's let's That's pull this bitch. Let's pull this out, okay? One, two, three. Oh, you got it. Come on. Are are you pulling or pushing? Bob, are you pulling it? Rich, get off Definitely the seat! This, you're way too heavy. You're way too heavy. <laughs> I was pulling too. Okay, well let me push, you pull, and let's uh let's try and get this done, okay? So on the on the count All of right. three, okay? One, two, three, pull, pull, Bobby. <laughs> pull uh. <laughs> pull oh Bobby it didn't have to do that right here this is a family show <laughs> oh boy <laughs> <laughs> welcome to little theater of snowmobile sessions hope you guys enjoyed that we're gonna have a good show tonight guys yes we are how was your week how was your week oh it's been a trip yeah what yep. a How about long, you guys? strange trip it's been. Yep. I was off. Yeah, I was we off. Had our thank- we had our Thanksgiving, so it was great, man. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah we, had a, we had a long weekend. Today's our Monday, so uh, things are good. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yesterday was so. holiday, and oh, yeah. So the up north, the leaves are almost all gone out of the trees, mm-hmm. and this Saturday, they're calling for snow. Wow. So, yeah, so you can't complain about that. Awesome. But uh yeah, so anyway, we got uh, we got a couple of things. I'm going to do the fan photos next. But as you probably read in the um, on our descriptions, that we're going to bring you guys in as a special guest. We've had Dave Nerona on. We've had Sledneck Dan Adams on. We've had the guy from the museum. We have David Cook from Euclear. Uh, and we had Nunzio, the, the Polaris ambassador. And now it's your turn to be the star of the show. So, and we can have up to 10 people on here at once. I've got a couple people that are coming in. One's coming in at 7.30, and then I gotta send another link out here. But if you wanna email me to fanphoto at mudbrats.com, all you really need is a computer with a camera and microphone or earbuds, or an iPad or iPhone or any smartphone device with a camera and microphone. Uh, You click the link that I will email you back, I'll see you up on the screen here. I'll let you in and we're good to go. So there's only three rules to this guys and that's uh, no swearing, uh, no bullying or or bashing each other and uh, I think that I think that's it. No politics. No politics. You guys are going through enough down south aren't you? Yeah. (laughs) We're not too far behind you. I bet. Oh no. So anyway let's uh, let's get to the fan photos. And then uh, while we're doing that, I'm going to actually uh, send a link out. Jesse wants to come back on, so I'm going to send him a link right now um, for uh, so that he can click. and. He's had his for a while now, man. Yeah, yeah, he was out riding it again on, on the weekend, I think. This must have been yeah. one of the first ones delivered. I think it was, and I think it was the first one with the... Uh, with the gauge gauges on it, so yeah, I was I gonna think say he, I thought the gauge was holding him up, but he had his so early. Obviously, that's not the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, he's uh, 
he's he's uh, had it he's had it well. So uh, just a shout out in the chat here. We've got uh, just going through this. Bruce Stewart th sleds three sixty five. Vector Ecker, how you doing? Uh, Sometime is now is out there. Zach McLeish, she's out there. Dakota, how's everything going there? You know, Mr. 85 GT, welcome aboard, buddy. You know, uh, Samuel Deary, Jason Campo, uh, you know, John Sturgis. The list goes on. Uh, you know, we'll get we'll get to all you guys in a second here, but I'm just going to go through some uh, some uh, fan footage. So let me just share the screen here. Just trying to see if there's anyone else's snow checks coming other than uh, the fellow we're having on there. I saw a couple at our uh, Skidoo Polaris dealer around here. Um, yeah. I think they had a one th a uh, an NDXC or I'm sorry VR1 137 and an Assault come in so. Oh, little, right on. So they're starting to come mix. in. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. And then they've had a bunch of skidoos come in, like XRSs, backcountries, all sorts of different stuff. Yeah. I picked up my uh, my ice scratchers came in, and I went down there to the local skidoo dealer to grab them. And I uh, was asking him, just talking, Bobby and I, we were talking about that off air, and same with Gary. And there was a couple that were that were backed out from spring checks, and there was an MXZ and an XRS. And so you know what there's there's some deals there to be had well yep. i don't know if i would say deals but there's some sleds, <laughs> there's some sleds there if, yeah. still get uh, one, yeah. if if it, you know you just gotta keep on top of a dealer and i'm sure there'll be more guys you know Absolutely. that will be uh that will be backing out so there'll be deals there so yep <clears throat> something's right. going on here all right here we got that all right you guys that. see that there look it at is. that beast eh? yeah so this like, is uh, that's got, that almost looks like uh, what's his name's old sled. Uh, what the heck? Is this name? is Mark, Mark Bose. Bose. Oh, it okay, is. So this is Mark Bose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's it's a it's in good shape. So Mark Bose says, "Hey Gary, loving the show. Thought I'd share a few more pictures with you guys. Back in 2014, after a 20 year hiatus from snowmobiling, I finally got back into it when I traded some tools for this '91 Formula MX. After countless hours of restoration work, it was finally ready for the trails. Well, I thought it was." till the engine seized after only a few miles of riding, then he rebuilt the engine and sold it. I've included a few more pics of some of the other sleds I've had and my latest purchase, a 2019 MXZ Blizzard 600R. Absolutely love that sled. Can't wait to ride again. Mark and I did a, uh, we did a um, collaboration video too um, in our area a couple years ago. That was when he was on his uh, Yamaha Apex. It was a riot, we had a lot of fun. Look at that, you could eat off the inside of that one. Can yeah. you guys see that? There oh, it is. Oh, yeah. There we go. Wow. There you go. You can heat off the inside of that. Absolutely. See, that's well, that the 583. Some... Looks like that. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I don't know why I'm getting these all on the bottom screen, but we're back up on the big screen oh, now. Oh, there's so. hey, there's well, there's the Vmax I was telling you, Gary. <laughs> that's a 94. Yeah. I, I had I had one of those. <laughs> Six, that's nice eh? Hey? there's no difference in speed between the 600 and 500 on the lake they were side by side <laughs> yeah that's right and this is his, his apex that i rode with him on the yeah. apex or venture if you're on there mark i thought it was an rx1 I thought it was no, it wasn't a, it, no it wasn't no it wasn't no it was it was either the apex or the i think it was the apex and then he, his indy which i think he still owns that but this is you know where this trail is rich this is between halliburton and muskoka uh, yep. the bottom of Algonquin Park. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yep. Yep. The bottom of the park. There numerous times. So he said it was a 2009 Vector. So there you go. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Uh, 467. So that was before the 583 came out. Uh, yeah. And then we got his. Uh, see, that's the thing. My so I apologize, guys, because I've got this is the technical difficulties. I ended up lending some equipment out this week and it came back not fully functioning so um just when i thought i was getting it down i'm i have to start at square one and this is actually in our area as well this is um up near bellwood lake the a lot of those trails are closed so but that's his nice uh his blizzard um 2019 600r i haven't rode with him yet since he got that but we'll see what happens <laughs> so um 
You guys got to step it up, man. I need more fan mail. Fan photo at mudbrats.com. Come on. You do. Come on. You know, <laughs> I, I get it. I live for this. So I look at my email every day. And when I don't get an email, I cry. I cry, guys. Cry. <laughs> you know. So Jeremy actually got a new helmet. He's a, I remember last year, if you watch my videos, he had some troubles with his helmet. So he got this G-Max and it's a, it's a, he says it's that time of the year when us snowmobilers need new gear. Just pick this up, a G-Max GM64 Vortex with a heated shield. So he says, bring on the snow. So this is awesome. So uh, or, then we're gonna go to this, uh, this um, viewer here. He says, uh, he heard we like, uh, he heard we're all Ram guys. So he sent us a picture of Super Duty Ram, pretty nice. <laughs> um, nice. He said, he, this is from uh, BKD694. He just wanted to thank us for the podcast. He lives downhill from Rev Rider. Awesome. Did you know that? Do you recognize that truck? You want I to pass know, your place? Looks like a beauty. Yeah. Yeah. From, uh, he, <clears throat> he's going to hit Tug Hill this year with a vengeance. He has to admit he's not very tech savvy, so all your shows I've watched through YouTube. I would love to watch a live show and be able to comment, etc. What do I watch it through? Sorry if it's a stupid question. I understand you're busy, so if you don't reply back, I understand. Wish you well and love all you're doing. I accidentally blocked you, so sorry. No, <laughs> no, I actually sent him the instructions in a little thing. So watching it on YouTube is perfectly fine. That's the yeah. best way to watch it. And live, there's a little chat area that you can actually participate in the chat. And if you want to really participate, you can send us a super chat and you can send us stickers. We love stickers through the bottom and, and away you go. So, yeah, so that's, uh, he says, um, oh, he's got a picture of his 2020 assault here as well. Oh, he sent us a bunch of pictures. Wait, this is, this is gonna- Oh, you're uh, hilarious pictures. I see how it is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, he, he, he picks good sleds. I don't know about his truck, but his sleds are right. <laughs> I think we've actually spoken before. I've seen his sled. Yeah, yeah. The, I love the wrap. Eh? He's a, yeah. he's a, yeah, it's a nice like, wrap. Yeah. yeah. And I think he's got Mountainside Product spindles on it and much of that. Right. Yeah. Nice, yeah. nice. Nice. Yeah. And and he's a rider too. The uh, we're gonna get to the picture. Oh, here he is on it before the wrap. Yep. That's, That's pretty nice cool. Color. Yeah. I like yeah. that color. I actually was messing around with that. That was between what I got, the black and gray in that one. Yeah, yeah like, that's cool. Nice. That's cool. And then uh, this is the picture I love. He's got oh, her yeah. buried in the snow. I love it. So. <laughs> your that's stickers there, your, your little uh, registration stickers, can you do custom ones or are you stuck with uh, with what? Uh, legally, I you? don't think you can. I think you can get away with it in most cases, but I'm pretty sure they can give you a ticket if they want, if you do a custom one. <clears throat> yeah, that's yeah, too bad. I would like that up here, and then they lean, they, they uh, eased up on it. Yeah. So yeah. Have to put yeah. Custom, but it had to be in a certain area and whatnot. So, yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, they're the so, ugliest thing. That's, you know, cars are horrible, those huge blocks. And they're yeah, reflective, yeah. too. Try pulling that off, you know? Yeah. Hey, do you remember, Richard, do you remember that when, I think it was Dave or Sledneck Dan, he was he was saying that, that when a sled is, before it comes out, like like let's say the Gen 4, it was actually, he was riding it in 20, 2013 when it was like a 2017 yeah. release and that kind of thing. Well, actually yeah. I had an anonymous viewer send me in, uh, he, she sent me in some a sled test pilot that, uh, that, that, um that I can show don't don't tell anybody that you've seen these pictures here because uh might be kind of uh might be well, kind they, of pissed off they they, they Just, do a lot with the auto auto manufacturers do they wrap they put those wraps on with like kind of zebra stripe looking things so it you can't differentiate the angles and yeah and yeah so <clears throat> I oh know I know they've, they've done that before yeah like look at this guy He's uh, this is the oh, this must be the this must be the Arctic Cat test pilot here. Oh, Got a couple sweet. more here. Yeah, yeah. The uh, this one here. Look at this. He's Skidoo oh. test pilot here. Yeah. Go back. This this is uh, this is Bobby. If for those that didn't catch it, yeah. and this anonymous viewer said, uh, check out those sweet cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> Another Definitely test pilot photo. Yeah. Oh yeah, for <laughs> sure. 
right I on. think this is my favorite here. Hold it here. And this pitcher, he would take his friends for rides in the garage. He wouldn't even need snow. There's it. That was the sled you were right talking there. about, Bobby. The XLT, bud. Yep, that's the first sled. Yeah, Is that right? That's great. awesome. Those were amazing sleds, man. Yeah. I think they I have to have been one of the best uh, sellers for players. Oh, yeah. The yeah. They, they Our neighbor had a 95. We had a 97. They were awesome. Yeah. Who's yeah. the kid with? The, who's the kid rocking out here? Uh, that was my buddy Philip, and then the guy in the back actually is uh, Josh. He's in all my videos. He rides yeah. the rev. He's he, he's the that guy there. Right? Yep, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Ride or die, that's, buddies. Hey, eh? that's awesome. Exactly. I love these. Yeah. So that's from your mom, Kim. Yeah. Thanks for sending them yeah. in, mom. <laughs> <laughs> She That's said, awesome. uh, "You got." She said, "You guys are doing a great job. I don't even. I don't snowmobile, but I find it even fun to watch. I when I, God. you know how I, cr I cried all week because I only had two days of pictures, and then on the <laughs> weekend, Kim saves a day, there and it is. was like just when I was about to to give up on snowmobile sessions totally, <laughs> Kim comes along and does that. So, awesome, Jeremy, Absolutely. Jeremy, Jeremy, how are you, buddy? Good. Oh, how are you guys? Need some light." Jeez, have you got a flashlight or something we can put on your face? No. No? no. Are you going to be like the mystery man? Yeah, yeah there you go. I'm yeah, going to pull one more in. Jesse! What's going on, guys? Yeah. See, hey, everyone in the chat, you want to come on screen, man. You just have to send me an email to uh, fanphoto at mudbrats.com, and I'll, I'll shoot you back. I'll reply with a link, and we'll get you, uh, we'll get you going. Oh, hey, I think Greg Eastman wants on. Oh, yeah, he wants on. I'll send him a link. We'll get him on. We, we might kick one of you guys to the curb. So, hey, listen, uh, let's start. Jer Jeremy, let's start with you. We haven't talked to you in a while. What's up? What's new? Uh, well, uh, employee pricing just ended. That was... That was uh, whoa, 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 whoa. No shame. Did I not say that as one of the rules? No shameless plugs. <laughs> no, no. Uh, it, it ended. It was really successful at the dealership. Um, yeah, we had a had a record month. Um and now it now it's slowed down, so that's yeah. typical for up in this area. So, so you'll be you'll be. Uh, are you buying a, another sled now? Is it or is it slow, too unpredictable no, no, right I now? No, I'm going to hold off. I think uh, I'm looking um, at getting a, a two up seat for the sled I have now, um, and then just save my money and thinking of doing a spring check in the in the spring. Oh, okay, cool. Cool. So, uh, actually, I've got a I've got a question here. If you you and J Jesse want to chime in on this too, uh, this is sent from uh, BKD six ninety four uh, Rev's neighbor. I've got a question for you guys. I know it's the start of season, but this pertains to summer storage. Do you guys lift your whole sled susp suspension slack during storage? What's your thoughts? I we I used to do it. Me and my dad used to do it, but. We've stopped doing it. Our mechanic told us it's not really necessary. No, it isn't. I agree. Oh, hey, your yeah. suspension's under tension anyway, so the only thing you want to do is is if you have a deeper lug, like probably what Rich is going to have on his assault and maybe Bobby as well, You, if you're running a deeper lug, you want to make sure you have something underneath it so the lugs aren't sitting on, yeah. especially concrete's bad for it, so two by four on its edge, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. I've seen the mountain so. guys do that. It seems like a pretty good setup, just like a two by four to get the paddles up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I love you guys. You sent in a bunch of photos to come in, so we're gonna get to them tonight, okay? So just uh, just bear with. So let's, uh, Jeremy, he's he's promoting, go buy a truck at uh, Bickley Ford in Huntsville. He's there uh, most days. If not, don't see anyone else there. Wait for him to come back. He won't <laughs> be gone long. Probably just out for a smoke and a coffee. And then Jesse, what's up with you, man? Not much. Sled's ready to go. It's sitting in the trailer. My trailer needs new brakes, so that's happening right now. But besides that, I I have to uh, take it back to the dealer because they're still waiting for some back-ordered accessories. But besides that, all ready. Yeah. Now, did you upgrade your headlights? I did, and they're amazing. <laughs> I told I you. you did the video, more. and then I had, to, I had to adjust the bulbs so they faced straight up because when you put them in originally, they're on like a 30-degree angle. Yep. Like nine-day yep. difference. Now, Jesse, oh, I have sure. to explain something to you. 
Polaris has been giving you LED bulbs for the past <laughs> eight years, but I know you it's spend sad all that money on Skidoo, and those French guys can't give you twenty dollar <laughs> bulbs. I don't know any of the accessories. Yeah. yeah, my dad has an yeah. Indy. My dad has a twenty nineteen Indy, and it, so yeah, it's, it's, it's shit. But Skidoo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But those lights, those headlights you bought, they're uh, they they kick butt. Uh, that's yeah. My, uh, uh, my my buddy Mike is also buying the same ones from you, I think, Gary. Yeah, he did. He did. He already ordered them. So MotoJungle.ca slash Eagle has landed. If you're riding a, a Gen Four, it's the H13. If you're riding the XP or XS, it's the H4 bulbs. If you're riding XP or XS, get the the DV2, the black ones. That's what I ran last summer, Jeremy. You seen them? Oh yeah, didn't were, you? Yeah, it's night and day. I, I didn't want to spend the four hundred and fifty dollars on the accessory light this year. So <laughs> I know my and my they lights are ninety. Four hundred fifty dollar LED yeah. light, but we'll put it and in, shit, in the factory. I beam, they're just low beam. They give you they yeah. The air in and front my of the sun. and my lights are ninety bucks high and low beam, and they're the 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 DV two's uh, twenty thousand lumens. So. Yeah. yeah, it'll it'll light up. You know what? It, it's funny. It's it's like the auto uh, manufacturers there, and Jeremy will probably love this too. It's like Ford. You got to get up to the uh, the what is it? What's the mid? It's not the the Laramie. What what is it? What's the mid range on the Ford, Jeremy? Uh, XLT. No, but the one above that the package. The Lariat. You got to oh, no, yeah, get the Lariat to get an LED light package. And it's hey, like, Coda Bear. Oh, guys. Coda yeah, Bears in the house. They changed it for 2021, yeah. actually. Did they change that, Jeremy, too? I finally? believe so, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I think I, you, I, can get you know, all these auto manufacturers, and, you know, and, you know I mean, throw in LED lights and everything, man. Snowmobiles, motorcycles, like, <laughs> what do you charge me the extra 20 bucks more? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, you know, it, it, exactly. And Dodge does it, GMC does it, they all do it. So. I hope I hope that Skidoo never puts LED headlights in their snowmobiles. So Gary can keep them and business. sell them on the side. <laughs> so I can keep selling them to everyone else. And you know what? They're good. They're they're really good. So yeah. if you don't know, just just check out my channel, Mud Brats on YouTube, and uh, click the subscribe button. But just search best LED for Skidoo. It comes with a Skidoo rectifier. T tried, tested, and true for four maybe five seasons i've been running them five seasons i think now and yeah. uh they blow away everything there's other lights out there that they claim they're higher lumens and stuff but i'm telling you the beam is engineered for the to to be in the right position exactly where the skidoo halogen is so when it's sitting in the rectifier it's it it has the same properties there's no scatter that's a problem with most led is the light scatters really wide if you're looking at it, it looks really bright, but it, it's not a focused beam, so you can outdrive it. Like the first set I had were like uh, Moto LED or something, garbage. You you do 60, 70, 80 miles an hour, and and it was almost like you hit the speed of light. There was no light; you couldn't see a thing. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah, Greg is here. Sometime is now. How are you doing, buddy? Hey, how are you doing? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. You're pretty quiet down okay. there in that bottom corner. Well, I was just so. I was listening to your conversation. I ended up getting those LED headlights, the ones that you installed in that one sled on your. Uh, yeah. On your and how did you like show. those? Yep. I haven't put them in yet. Oh, okay, perfect. <laughs> I, just, I just got them. Okay, per yeah, we're we're a little slow on the take. Uh, I've had holidays, a lot of them, and and uh, also too with COVID, you can't you can't depend on any couriers, especially going to the U.S. as well, right? Um, they're not available in the U.S. only through me, um, so it's I'm at the I'm at the mercy of when they can get down there. So, um, and everybody's been pretty patient with me so far. So, you know, yeah. So, and then the the COVID masks are huge. I got a lot of I just put the U.S. shipping on that, so they're uh, they're actually going really well for my American friends down there. So, even though I just Trump saw claims them in here. I see those yeah. on your opening scene there, and I'm going to get Yeah, them. yeah. Yeah, I you like should. Them. And I can do custom as well. So if you need really? custom as well, then away we go. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, Gary, but, um, um, those lights that you're talking about, would they work on my sled? Uh, no. I the, Would they work? Possibly, but I they're not meant for it. It's no, a different – I would say I would say it's not – 
you could try, but you might get flicking. Like I, I know even yeah. in the rev, the first generation yeah, revs. Or something, right? <clears throat> no, they they have a rectifier on them, but they're not. Yeah. It's not well, actually yours is a battery, so it might be all right. We could try a set if you want, but yeah, okay. I I know we put them in a in a three eighty fan when we were first testing them, and and they flickered like crazy, and and you put them in a XP, like going from a rev to a rev XP, and something in it, it's different and. They work fine in the XP XS, and and there you go. So oh, yeah, yeah. My, uh, my buddy Mike had the Moto LED headlights last year, and one of them blew up on him. In the middle of yeah, the the, you can see the wiring in them. They're crap. He was smoking, like and he thought there was something wrong with the machine, so we have to pull, take everything apart on the side of the trail. And uh, <laughs> uh, we were in Goganda. You yeah. imagine having your sled catch fire over a freaking. What were they? They were sixty dollars, I think, for a pair of those. Well, it was um, it was very funny because he was waiting for my machine to blow up. He thought I was going to either blow a belt or my machine was going to give me issues that day, and then he was the one that had issues, and it was very funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, no, no, that's cool. That's cool. So, what else is new, Greg? Uh, you getting excited about um, about Abs- winter? Absolutely. Yeah, I got that new sled that I'm uh, I'm ready to get some uh, real miles on it. I got that yeah, 20 nice. uh, XRS uh, 900 turbo. Yeah, I 900 it, uh, Ace. Yeah, the 900 Ace. I ended up buying it the um, the day of the Snowfest there, where they were doing all the test uh, rides. I drove up to Old Forge and picked it up with some guy that was selling it. It had 500 miles on it. That's nice. Awesome. Awesome. Nice. It's and the then this I year, buy. yeah, and then this year is uh, is like crazy. You could probably sell it for for way more than what you paid. I see guys selling those 900 days turbos for what they are new at the dealer, you know, yeah, in Canada here. I got the, I got the sled and it had, uh, he had it, he's got the uh, two up seat mount on the back. Plus it had the gas can and the bag. I got 12 grand. That's why I ended up nice. there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, nice. That sled probably cost him almost 16 grand. Yeah. Yeah. Good deal. Crazy. Oh yeah, it's uh, buying them used, especially low miles, is is the way to go. I have a buddy that that can't find a sled right now. It's the one that caught on fire, and he actually sent me another couple twelve hundreds, and the one was gone right away. And then the second one, he actually drove from Huntsville area, Perry Sound area, to Sudbury to see it, and the guy was using it to haul wood out of the bush, so it was it was clapped. So he didn't do that. Yeah, so. But uh, that old nine that you have, uh, I had the same sled. It was the MXZX. Uh, oh, nice. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I don't know it good... if it's the. F- I don't know if it's the fact it doesn't have an electric starter, but that thing before I did the clutch on it, it was a rocket. Like it's just now now it's clutched. It's it's even better. I can't wait to to get it right this year. Uh, it's going in to see uh, Adam again at BYR. And, we're gonna put some weights on the primary, and I'm gonna go with uh, with adjustable clickers, so I don't have to get the wrenches out, and uh, and be able to adjust them on the fly, and see what happens. So but I'm impressed with it; it's good. So I, I think I'll do another year on it, and then if things are going well next year, then then maybe look at upgrading. Yeah. I actually think the 600, uh, the 09 600, runs better than my 18 600. It seems to have more pull. Oh, is that right? Yeah. 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 Like they off the bottom, it's pretty quick. I think mine, I think my mine right now will 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 beat my old 800. Yeah. So. And I don't know if it's because my other one was a short track and this one's a renegade. It might not. I mean. You know, I mean, it's not breaking the track loose like the other one. You, it just seemed like it went quicker. But yeah, I don't know, you, maybe you do have a. I think you have an advantage with the Renegade though over a short track, just from the traction standpoint, right? right? That's the thing. When I, yeah. Someone said uh, up here is a. Where is it here? I'll get this. I'll get him up on screen here. He said, "Are the is a is an eight hundred fast? Where is he? Um, did you see that? That that." They're all fast. <laughs> They're fast, yeah. They're all fast if you're not. Anyway, that's uh, they, the video that, of uh, the long ride home. Yes. When you went the off the lake and yeah, <laughs> Mike pulled away from you quite easily. Yeah, but that's he was. We were also doing about eighty-five miles an hour at that point in time. 
<laughs> you did you see how? <laughs> what's that? Yeah, I, I was. I reeled everybody in right <laughs> off the bat. But no, the, yeah, there's a video I raced the 800 E-Tech and I had the clutch done on it and a Bondi airbox, a two degree timing advance. So it was no slouch and it was tuned up and cared for. And that XRS, it was a 137. So I, I have a traction advantage and I swear to God that 600 was, was two sled lengths behind me, uh, like lake to lake. And I mean, if, if he had hooked up better than me, it probably would have been equal or he would have blew me away. But in the trails, if you didn't see a sticker on the side of that sled, you'd swear he was on an 850. Hmm. Yeah. It's, hey, a, Bobby. it's a good sled. Hey, Bobby, you missed that 850 already? I see you sold that. Yeah, it's gone. Um, it was a little sad to see it go, but, you know, I can't get too attached to them. It'll, it'll hold up the YouTube content too much right. if I do. Right. But definitely like one of my sled. all-time favorites. Thank you. Yeah, I like that sled. It was a good looking machine. I, I, it's funny, my dad told me to get that lime color on it, and I was really leery on whether to do it or not, but I was, I'm was i so happy that I chose it. It was awesome. Well, I've always been a black, yeah. and red, black and red kind of sled guy, but um, when I saw the XRS with the, the Manta Green 900 yeah. there that I bought, I'm, it kind of grew on me, and after a while, I was like, <laughs> oh, well, I really like that. And then when I started Absolutely. watching your channel, I'm like, ah, I should, if I didn't have my 600 would have bought that 850 from you just to have that second slide. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. That's awesome. Greg, those, uh, has those red accents on it, right? Yeah. 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 yeah it has awesome. the spindles, the, the accents on the seat, and then uh, the handlebars are uh, yeah, red. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, it's a beauty. When I first saw the, the red with the Manta, I wasn't so sure, but, man, it grew on me. And I absolutely, like, every time I see a video or a picture of one, I love it. Yeah, it looks yeah. better in person than the, the picture. If you look at a picture, it doesn't do the justice of that color. Yeah. But if you see it in person, it is nice. Very true. Yeah. 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 No, that's cool. That's cool. So, Gary, I was going to say, if, uh, I've never actually had the chance to ride an XP. I went from a 2000 Polaris to 2013 XS. I've never ridden an XP. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, you, the XS is a is slightly better than the xp, Basically, the XP i'd say you no know, no the there's a little bit of goodies in the front end of the xs that made it better there is the like it it was yeah it was more than just panels like a lot of people make that mistake that it's just a a cosmetic change but they changed the the, the front spindles the geometry the geometry of that front end the their tunnel yeah. back is identical but uh, mm -hmm. the front end makes it a little bit better. And the sight lines, I, there's a video I did showing, showing the revolution of the evolution yeah. of Rev through the years. And it's, you can see when you're sitting on it that you can see the skis better. I, I do like the XS. So I, I, I had a, a buddy with an 800 XS and I had the 800 XP, like Renegade to Renegade. And you get, get on his and it just felt like you're riding like a like a star wars you know like the 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 junk the bikes in the yeah. in the forest right the ewok bike thing compared to mine where it was all body right so but you know what don't worry jesse i'm gonna let you ride mine the whole day when we switch sleds <laughs> i noticed when i went from the sp to the xs i had to get different bids bids because i didn't get the wind protection on my knees when it was real cold and my knees would get cold on the XS chassis. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. it is. It does go down a lot more. Yeah, yeah. Right? Gen 4, your toes might get a little cold too because of that. On the, I forget which side it is, but one of your sides is cold. One of your feet will be colder than the other. Is that right? Yeah, yeah the way they design those footwells, because there's no longer really a footwell. It's just a, like a yeah. pop piece where you can put, put your boot on. But besides that, I think, I don't remember which side. I'm pretty sure it's the clutch side that's a little bit cooler than your right side. Yeah, Might right, the right. Heating you up on the left side. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Cohen Ronahan, he's going to pop in here too. I just sent him the link. So if you want to go on, email me at fanphoto at mudbrats.com and uh, we can play it like Survivor even and, and vote vote you guys out to the curb. So, hey, anybody, <laughs> I, I know uh, Jesse was busting my chops this week because he hadn't seen uh, his T-shirt that he won on the first show and then yeah, he won like I 10... <laughs> I know I got it. I, I my Nerona package. Yeah, your your Nerona packages. I believe you won too. 
Um, I haven't sent him anything yet because I have to go through the video again. And I just, I haven't had Wi-Fi. I've been away. So uh, I'm doing that this week. I'm printing the shirts. They're, they're, they're all the materials ready to go. I just got to adhere it to the shirt and send them out. So I um, run to the mailbox every day waiting for that shirt. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I run to my email box, and you probably have the same feeling where you cry when you don't see anything <laughs> from your fans, right? No, it's coming. It's coming. So, did you guys send me the sizes, too? I, text, I, should, I, met, I sent you the I size. know you did. I know you did, and Jeremy sent me his sizes. Um, even Jeremy tried bribing me with, a, with a, a round this week in order to get his shirts faster, didn't you, Jeremy? Oh, yes. <laughs> And it didn't work because I was up north, you know. You, you didn't come visit me. I know, I know, I will, I will. <laughs> yeah. Come over for dinner. I will. Yeah. For sure, but don't don't tell anybody because of that COVID thing, right? Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, no, I'm Just trying to enjoy mask, the cut. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I will. Like a scream scream mask, or do you want me to wear the old man mask, or, oh, or I don't what? Care. You can wear your underwear. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. yeah wear, so your, wear your old modular two helmet. Yeah. There you <laughs> go. I have here's a, a, there's a, for you. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know what? The uh, um, here's here's the the how great snowmobilers are though. So Jeremy and I just met through Mike. Well, actually, Jesse down here knows Mike as well. Like and that. Jeremy and I just rode one day. And aside from being under his hood with him, I didn't really talk to, we didn't really know each other that well, right? Like we shot the shit and stuff. And then he started following the channel. And, and then I, I had a job interview and I had to do a Zoom meeting. And the guy was nice enough to say, hey, come over to my house and do it at my house. You know, and like, like that's, here's a guy that, that, you know, I don't really know. And he, and he opened his doors up to me. Um, if I needed it, right? So I really appreciate that, Jeremy. Awesome. Cheers to you, man. It's the Muskoka thing to do too, right? Yeah. Mm. Well, I have yeah, a story. Yeah, I was up in Muskoka and we ran out of gas on the sled and we had to tow one sled with the other and had very little gas and then we ran both. So we had to hike for like five minutes and we saw a street and we went to the nearest door and knocked on the guy's door and asked him if he had spare gas. And uh, he gave us gas, and nicest guy. We offered to pay him for it. He refused to take any money. Gave us two full jerry cans of gas to fill up the sleds, and we got home. Well, that's wow. incredible. Yeah, yeah that was nice. nice that's people. wild. Yeah, it's just like the humanity, right, of it all. Yeah. I for just, I just nice than people get. If you want to others as you want done to yourself, right? So yeah, I, it's that, and I I've lived by that. My whole life, so. Yeah, no, that's exactly cool. When you're that's cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah, it's true, right? Sorry, Cohen. I didn't. Uh, I couldn't click your picture. I've been trying for a few minutes. You're down off my screen. So this is Cohen Rona, and he uh, he he was actually chatting from the very first episode. Hi. Welcome uh, aboard. Yeah. Thank so. You, uh, you yeah. got a new 600 R, correct? No, an 800. Right? You got an 800? Okay, perfect. Yeah, perfect. Sorry. Right. Okay. Right nice. on. That's right awesome. On. What yeah, year is it? 2021? No, 2015. Oh, I was nice. Because the 800 only came in the XRS until 2017, I think. Oh, okay. I misheard him. That's awesome, though. Yeah. yeah pretty excited. First sled, actually. Yeah. Oh, was it really? Yeah. Nice. Well, that I bought. Like, I've been riding sleds that my dad bought for years. But. I just bought my first sled, too. It hurts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you're still in, and Jesse's still in school. So, yeah, it's, so uh, when you, when, are you? When I, when Jesse told me he was in school in med school, I was like, holy No, no, crap. I'm applying to go into med school. Mm. Well, it's the same deal. Yeah. Man, like, yeah. yeah. Hopefully, well, hopefully, interviews are like anywhere from February to April. So hopefully, it don't doesn't fuck up the season too badly. But no, oh, hey, watch the f shots. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby loses his monetization when he gets that. <laughs> no good. <laughs> now we have to. Now Bobby, we have to say we have to check the box saying there is an F shot in the. <laughs> now, question for Bobby, uh, Mister Eighty Five GT. I see most of your videos. The trails look twenty feet wide and open like fire roads. Do you have any tight bush trails in New York? 
No, yeah, so uh, if I ride from Oneida Lake and I start heading up north, they're super tight and windy. And uh, I just don't often do that because where I live, the lake doesn't freeze that often. So I'm en- I end up trailering anyway. But um, it's more just Old Forge and, and the heart of Tug Hill that are super wide like that. There's a lot of areas that are – even around my house, there's kind of a lot of uh, power line trails with a lot of brush and stuff like that. So just depends on the area. Yeah, I remember seeing a club on Facebook, Valentine Farms, I think it was called. And, like, I saw the groomer, and I'm like, I've never seen a groomer that wide in my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We really? have some, some huge ones. Yeah, crazy. Like they'd have the wings on the back, like out yeah, the sides like, and stuff. Like double the width of any groomer I've seen in Ontario. Oh wow! <laughs> nice, <laughs> like nice. Yeah, so that is awesome. There we got so, Rich back. Oh, Jeremy disappeared. Oh, oh, so Bobby, sorry, Jeremy. When you cross over in Lake, uh, Night of Lake, do you ever go onto the Count Trail and head south, like out towards uh, Cato area? I haven't tried that yet, to be honest. Um, normally, we just head north, but that could be something cool to do, you know, this year. It's just tough. That it feels like the the rides at home get less and less frequent these yeah, past couple last of years. Last few years, it has been. Yeah, yeah. I grew up riding from my cottage, and now, like, it, we're lucky if Port Perry opens for a week to two weeks in the season. Exactly, it's true. Oh, you're, it's you're true. close to me, Jesse, because I'm. I'm 10 minutes away from Port Perry. Yeah, my cottage is uh, Little Britain, right on the uh, oh, yeah. Ramsey and Simcoe. Yeah, Basically. yeah, you got to go far north, man, at least two hours, unfortunately. So. You, and that always blows yeah. me away how, how uh, Port Perry and the, even the Long Sioux Ridge Runners, how those guys are even open. Like, know, honestly, their their seasons one. are literally, literally three or four weeks. Which but the difference is Port Perry gets lots of money because they're close to Toronto. So a lot of people buy permits in Port Perry because it's the closest club to the city. Yeah, yeah right, they got right. Four groomers for like 80K of trail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Darren Broadway, hello from Alberta, Canada. Let's go through a couple of these. Uh, um, and we said Coda Bear, he's on. I love his channel. There's another good channel. Uh, I think he's a real uh, fan of Revs as well. You've rode with him, haven't you, Bobby? Yeah, we uh, when we both had our 19 Assault 850s, we rode together uh, a few times. And then last year was real hit or miss with the weather, so um, did we he, didn't end up being able to link up. Did he keep his SKS, Bobby, or, or did he get a new sled for this year? He didn't really say. I haven't seen anything on his channel lately. Um, well, I know it was for sale. Uh, that's the last I knew of. I don't, I'm don't. i not sure if he actually sold it or if he's sharing what he's doing or not. But um, it, at one point, it definitely was for sale. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I was going to say, Rich, uh, the closest, like, down in that area, I feel like the only safe bet is that rail trail from Lindsay. Because that usually, they, they have that open for the longest period of time that goes right up to Halliburton. It's just yeah. and, then the cop, and, and then the cops are, uh, are always sitting on there, apparently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're always I've on those rail trails. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. It's lighting better over here now. It is. It's looking better. He's getting serious. Uh, we He's got... turning his head around. No, I switched yeah. boss in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, Jerry, so, does anybody, anybody, else, love it? anybody else in this group have a, a machine as old as mine? or What year is your machine? Mine's a 99 Formula Deluxe. Oh, I was close. I had two 2000s. I had I paid five hundred bucks for it last winter, so I had it's a, a steal. I yeah, I saw the video. Seven ovation I, Yamaha. I I see sleds similar to mine selling on Kijiji right now or Facebook Marketplace, and they're asking twenty five hundred, three thousand, yep. and they got ten thousand kilometers on it. Mine doesn't even have three on it yet. So yeah, yeah nice. And our two thousand, I think, had like maybe like. 4,000 kilometers on it after we had them until 2015. Yeah. And we got maybe like 2,200 bucks for the sleds each. Yeah. Now, yeah. yeah. You stole oh, that just, one, bud. I can't believe what, what people are asking for their 20 year old snow machines right now. So, yeah. I know. That's why I'm kind of holding off on buying another one, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Well, you got the problem is you have to buy another one. 
if you sell yours, right? So, and they're top dollar. Uh, a buddy of mine had a 2003 beaver tail. I seen him throwing it out. Someone said, hey, what sleds are out there for like two to three grand or three to four grand, I think it was. And he put his, no, it was two to three grand. And he put his 2003 beaver tail, still original, not, not deleted or anything. It's still original beaver tail. It's an 800. Uh, I wrapped it, so it's, it's got a, wrap, a camouflage wrap on it. I didn't design it. He he bought it. I installed it, and uh, and he's. I know he cares for his stuff. And I just said to him, I think he was saying three grand or something. And I said, no, twenty eight hundred. I think is what he had on it. And I, and I was like, buddy, you, you should be like thirty five hundred on that right now. I know last year was a twenty five hundred dollar sled. Yeah. This year it's a thirty five hundred dollar sled. And he goes, really? I go. Put 4K on it and see what happens because guys are buying them, you know. And especially that's a that's a unmolested uh, beaver tail, like it's un not deleted, um, so it's all stock and it's an X package with the piggybacks, the the HPG piggybacks on it. So it's a good package. So, you know, um, he he'll probably find a buyer for it. Oh, I yeah. personally don't like the look of the beaver tails, but I don't either. <laughs> but they're collectible now, you know. Yeah. I used so, to have that 2003 beaver tail. That was the first yeah. red chassis. There's a yeah. guy with the yeah no it actually came out in 2002 believe it or not. Well, yeah, it was an ugly sled. Yeah, yeah, it they had a limited sled. yeah, they had a limited edition 2002 or 2002.5 whatever you want to call it. The beaver tail is out. There's a guy right near me that has one. Um, and then they they brought it full on in 2003. So they raced them in 2002. That's when it really made a name for itself because it was winning all categories, hands down, right? Um, but yeah, like it said, uh, uh, so last year, Jesse, I almost bought Mike's, I could have bought Mike's sled, right? It was XRS. No, it was X, it was a Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, he only buys X, he doesn't buy XRS. Yeah, yeah, 20, 2018 X package, two years of warranty nice left, uh, and the dealer gave him seventy five hundred dollars on trade, and like, like that sled now, people are asking eleven for. The dealer you know, like, offered me on Saint Ange offered me on my machine, which was a twenty eighteen and had eleven thousand k on it. They offered me sixty five hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I ended up selling so, it privately, but yeah. Yeah, for sure. So I'll buy yours next year privately off you. So. We'll do that. <laughs> we'll see. I'm holding when you get it, for you. Yeah. When you get into when you get into med school and you have to dump all your toys to pay for school, I'll be in line up getting the for the basement. You're the first in line. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> go. I was gonna say I don't. I, I think the ugliest sled in my mind is definitely that skidoo style. You know what I'm talking yes. about? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. Well, I don't know what they were thinking oh, they like with three three hundred cc or something like that. Yeah, they're 300cc yeah, yeah. yeah. singles. Yeah. 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 It's brutal. So, you know, when I was watching that video last week, and I think I said it to Rich too, that phaser, the phaser and the exciter with the, with the windshield on the handlebars, that was way ahead of its time. I still oh, think yeah. that thing looks good today, you know? Yeah, yeah that's that what young... put Yamaha over, eh, back, in, back then. That, that's what yeah. made the Yamaha sales go through the roof because it was a, a, a different looking sled. Yeah, I don't think they sold that well though. I don't oh, think yeah, they, they sold, sold as well as it. The yeah. Exciter and the phasers, they they sold a ton of them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. First best chassis, that's right. Is he's talking about the two thousand and three. Two thousand and two. So but yeah, it's uh you know, ugliest sled for me, what would it be? I think those Arctic cats with the two headlights. Oh the, oh, the bear cat. Uh, the, well, not the Bearcat. They were like the the Bearcat was like it, same hood. But what was that oh, cat with? Oh, uh, see, I, I, the, I the dragon, the Polaris dragon, to me was, and it yeah. had that I'd twin say, headlight system. I'd Mark say, Bow, oh, what maybe. what it? Mark Bow, what is that sled your buddy has? If you're watching, you know, because um, his buddy has one of them. It's I can't is remember the name there? of it. It's uh, it would be like probably 2005, 2008. Yeah, it might just be the turbos. They had like that gap between the headlights where the hood kind of went under them. But I yeah, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, Mark's watching this and 
and uh, he can comment because um, his buddy's got one. There, it's in his videos. You'll see it if you go onto Mark Bo's channel. And away you go. So what was that but, uh, What was that Paris that had a uh, the, like an evolution chassis with the headlight on all the way around the whole cow? The fusion. The that fusion grew up by Polaris. Uh, yeah, that, that, that was, was my spot. buddy. The, my buddy has one. It's a 900, and you know what? Zero problems. Wow. I think that was about the time that Skidoo took market share. When that yeah. came out, and then Skidoo came out. They, with yeah. American Snowmobiler, I think, has the boat anchor of the year or whatever, and it won the boat anchor of the year. So we always <laughs> bug my buddy Simon about that. But but honestly, it's a it's in one of my old, my early videos, and it's a 900 Fusion. And it's not as ugly as that cat. I I swear it's, yeah, Freeze yeah. The, it's a the 07 and 08 Arctic Cat F series, is what, what, uh, Ethan says. But I think that I like the the uh, the Fire Cat was an awesome sled. I don't know Fire what year those were. My all time favorite, like looking. Yeah, the Fire Cat was sweet. To Fire Cat can't beat it. Yeah. I do like the fire cat, and, and uh, our, we rode with a guy. It's in that same video with the other guy. Um, and uh, my buddy Dean said that when his buddy bought the the fire cat 700, yep. and Dean had the 800, he had the 800, not E Tech, the P Tech 800. Mm -hmm. And Dean said the Dean said the the happiest day of his life is when his buddy sold the 700 because it it would slap him silly. Yep. Oh yeah, that was on a the 800. Slide. Yeah, and then they had the in the Firecats. They had the. Do you remember the Joker edition, the Black yeah. Widow edition? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, if I could get a hold of one, that would be something I'd keep in the trailer for good. Yeah, 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 yeah. That Firecat was a wicked looking sled. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it rode good too. It had a really good suspension. It was, it was almost cab forward, like it was the. That's a problem. Is that that everybody was copying Skidoo. And then Skidoo, they just got there with the, with the, so it would have been 2005, I think is what my buddies was. And they, they just got there and then Skidoo went, ah, here's a rev 2003 and changed it all, yeah. you know, and everybody had just got there. And I, and I agree that Firecat's amazing <laughs> and it was fast. I, I didn't race them at all, but uh, that's when I had my 670 twin and that was a good sled. The, that's what you should get, Jeremy, is try and find a sled like yours with the 670 in it. Buddy, oh, that, that thing is a one of them for sale. Yeah, that thing's a rocket, and it's... They, uh, they won't take 500 bucks for them. <laughs> no, no. I I think I sold mine for 1700 Yeah. The fastest sled I ever rode was the, uh, the one and only time I ever bought a brand new snow machine was... Uh, Indy Storm 800. Nice. That, that thing was a rocket. Um, blew the center piston out of it, repaired it, then sold it in 2013. So and that, was, that was the last year I, I snowmobiled for a full season. This was my first full season back, so I'm looking forward to it. So Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. No, it'll be good. It'll, it always snows in our area, so we should even get some good uh good local loops under under our belt right you know so yeah um well, i'm looking well, forward to it quote unquote it's supposed to snow up here this weekend so yeah that's what so they say like, already yeah yeah the Alberta, farmer's almanac yeah. what the yeah heck? farmer's almanac says that every year though well no no there's the forecast the same snow um on sunday and um uh, michael k and i are supposed to go golfing Sunday, so. Oh, nice! Nice. Fingers nice. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys want to see some more pictures uh, that have come in while we're sitting here? Sure. Why not? Yeah, for sure. Here, let me just see here. I, I don't know why it's not sharing on the bottom screen. Let me see if I can figure that out. Has Richard got the cops coming to his house? Yeah, yeah. Our yeah. uh, windows open behind. <laughs> yeah. Are you right in town, Rich? No, man, I'm in Brooklyn. I'm north of everything, but for some reason, it's a hotbed up here for fire department. They're written, whipping around all the time. Oh, weird. Weird. Oh, I don't have any... Uh, uh, you know, yeah. that there you go. Go no freestyle. <laughs> hey, Rich. 
Rich. Yep. Rich. Rich. Uh, how far away are you from the uh, the Brooklyn Redmond Arena? Oh, that's right. It's two minutes away. That's uh, um, Luther Vipod. Yeah, it's it's two minutes away. Yeah, I played nice. a lot of lacrosse in that. So. Yeah. Oh, nice. Nice. I, he didn't give me any text on this. It's Chris Humble's Mike, uh, XC137, slide. I think. Yeah. That looks like an X. Uh, Let's play guess the sled. Yeah, right? <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. It's definitely a Polaris. Well, you definitely know those players from the spindles. Yeah. 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 Wonderful. Nice. It's nice, though. It's it's the uh, one of the special editions. I can't think of the name of it. Oh, hey, that buddy. Was the, um, uh, what was that edition? Founders yeah, it was edition? the one that came out. Some. Uh, I think it's Founders, edition, right? Yeah. The Founders Edition. Yeah. Founders yeah. Edition. Yeah. This yeah, one's. Nice this next slide. one's for. This next one's for Jeremy. Here we go. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on here. There we go. 380 fan F chassis oh, right yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice. So this is his big. This is his. Uh, uh, this is from Carl. He he said it's a big birthday for my 10 year old. I surprised him with a 2004 Ski Doo 380 fan. Here's a picture of him from Old Forge, New York. Nice. In Fourth Lake, Rev Rider will recognize. Heck yeah, you recognize you recognize that scenery there, Rev. Yep. Yeah, perfect. There's Rev Rider would, right there, sitting yeah. on the sitting on the porch. <laughs> I would ride that sled any day in the tight trails. Hey oh. man, those three and they're bulletproof. You cannot yeah. you cannot damage those. You know. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Just here. Pin it. Pin it. Pin it to win it. Uh, this one here is from. Uh, let me grab this here. Another Polaris here. Uh, this nice. is, uh, he says, uh, Kevin Bennett, love listening to you guys all the way from Eastern Townships, Quebec. He lives 30 minutes from uh, the Bombardier plant in Valcourt, but he bleeds Polaris. Great show. Keep it up. I love the look of those. <laughs> yeah, nice. Nice. Yeah, it's nice. I like the color scheme on that, too. Real sweet. What do we got here? Dakota Morell. Uh, hello, Gary. Th these are some pictures of my 98 Arctic Cat 440 Panther and my 03 Player 600 Edge XCSP. He just got in the sport four years ago. Oh, these are sweet. Hold on. Let me get this one up here. Just, uh, pardon me, I, if you're just tuning in here, I had some technical difficulties, so I'm kind of working back to square one here with my technology. But that's a yeah. great shot. Yeah. Uh, the best part about these pictures is it gives me new angles to shoot mine at. You know. True. And we got What's another exactly one. Looks like my old one. Oh, is that right? Yeah, that mine was really bright red. Like, uh, same chassis. On Tug Hill, on the by the gorge. I can kind of see that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. There's an Arctic cat. That's a yeah. Yeah. Or is that Panther? Pantera? That's a Pantera, he said. Pantera, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, he yeah, says Gary, it's a, it a like. uh, Arctic 440 Panther. A 440 was. Panther. Yeah. Very fast sled. My that was my first sled on the road. My, my the set, that was a 700, but yeah, I yeah, had that. In the he had the 500, and that would run with my 600 easy and actually pass me on the lake. Yeah, the 700, oh, nice. I remember getting like 108, 109 miles an hour every yeah. time. Crazy. God. Cohen! How do you say your name, Cohen? Is it Cohen or Cohen? Cohen. Cohen. There he yeah, is right there. Look at that, too. bud. That's there, Jeremy. Summary. See, they're, they're coming out for you, Jeremy. Look at the support. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Nothing wrong with it. I'm actually looking at a, getting a seat jack for mine so my stepdaughter can ride with me. So that sled oh, went. <sighs> that sled went twenty two thousand kilometers without any work except for like That's replacing crazy. Thing. Oh, isn't wow. it? Isn't it? Yeah. Don't you wish they built them like that today? <laughs> yeah, they so don't. My dad actually rode from Bellwood to Muskoka. And back. I want to do that actually. If it ever opened up, I'd like to do that run. I'd like to go up to. Yeah, <laughs> there, I don't think there's been a uh, 
I don't think there's ever been a um, a season in the last. I think my buddy Dino had said it. He said it's the last four years, four years ago or five years ago. You could have done it. All the trails were open and yeah, enough snow. So uh, mm-hmm. a buddy of mine, Ted, he might be watching. He did from uh, Aurelia. He did the wrap tour and back to Aurelia again. Well, that's, that's yeah, crazy. and that was uh, two years ago. So yeah, that's the new one right there. Yeah, that's sweet. Yo, that's, that's the 800, right? You'll yeah, love yeah. that. Yeah, game changer. So, my buddy, I think I already told you this. Dino had 13,500 k on his. He still had the original belt and the original plugs in it. Really? And he runs and he runs hard. My uh, my 600 E Tech, the 2013, got about 18,000 kilometers on it before it called the quit. Nice. In the middle hey. of Lake of Bays. <laughs> oh, jeez. Came to a stop, and we had to tow it 30 kilometers back to Dorset. Oh, man. Oh, there's What's more pictures down kilometers? there, too. What? <laughs> 18,000 uh, 18, kilometers, about 10,000 12, miles. 12,000 12, miles? Yeah. 12,000? Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. yeah. And it was annoying because we were selling. I had a buyer lined up to buy the machine the next week, and at that point, the machine was running fine and hadn't blown up, and then it blew up that weekend. <laughs> yeah, that was when we did the uh, Muskoka Magic Tour. Oh sweet, yeah. I see how bare it is. Yeah, it was. No snow. <laughs> who's uh, who's XP's that? The the that X was, package here. That was my friend's dad's. Yeah, yeah he let me good. borrow it for a quick rest. He should trade me the side panels for my black side you panels. Twenty twenty yeah. free ride. <laughs> Looks like a twenty twenty free ride. Yeah, twenty nine twenty yeah. free ride. One forty six, two and a half inch paddle. Nice right. color. Yeah. I, like that. I do like that. He's got your jacket that you need for yours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, a he does. FXR mono suit, the float tech. Yeah, yeah that's what my buddy has too. He loves it. So this is really warm. John Sturgis from boating to sledding. Have have been a huge boater for years, putting the boat away for winter. Now that I bought my 2021 Skiddy Renegade Enduro 900 Ace Turbo, right. we'll have fun sledding from boating. This is nice. uh this is a boat. This is a boat and a half. Oh, <laughs> where did it go? We need bikini women on this boat, though. That's uh, that's the only the only tip for your photography skills here. <laughs> right here. Look at that bad boy. Oh yeah, Malibu, yeah. Malibu eh? Malibu wake yeah. setter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she's nice. 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 Oh, yeah, nice. I, have a, I have a ski nautique. Nice. Oh so sweet, cute. yeah. If only it said Mastercraft on the side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we actually got. The then we could bug him about having a. Then we could bug him about having a boat made by Sears. <laughs> uh, my buddy had a master craft, and that's what we said. Don't they make tools? Yeah. <laughs> Robbie Bell, summer storage. Here's what I do. Oh, this is a great picture. I Check this out. This this will answer some questions. <laughs> Sorry, I get to see these ahead of you guys. <laughs> Wait, you see, see this? Oh, wow, there. <laughs> That's how you store a sled. <laughs> that wasn't yeah, you a don't question to... where you store it with the track off the ground. That's the yeah. Screen. That's that. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the thing hanging right from the top rafters of the garage. Oh, I love it. Austin Harris here. This is great, guys. You're making my night. A lot of Polaris content, though. I, I gotta tell you guys, we gotta get some dues on on screen here. You guys are doing, you guys are doing so well, and then all of a sudden, you know, we get fed this. <laughs> Hold on, this is a good one. Uh, where we got here? This is from Austin Harris, and he's he's wrapping her up on the parking lot. Pink? What's the pink smoke? I wonder if it's like a uh, gender reveal party or something. <clears throat> Yeah. Oh, oh, it could yeah. be. Oh, yeah. 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 Maybe I blew it up. Yeah. That's cool. It could be. Uh, yeah. That's pretty how they got the pink smoke. Gary, I just sent you a picture oh, that Steve wow. sent me here of his XCR. Get that up there. That's, oh, he did, did his gender reveal this past weekend. Sorry, I just seen that now. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. That's the same oil that Rich runs in his assault. Yeah. <laughs> the pink smoke. Yeah, well, you'll be seeing pink, buddy. That's all you'll be seeing. 
<laughs> Maybe if some of it got caught in the exhaust and he was at a bar and he fires it up and the pig starts rolling out. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, oh, yeah. Here we go. You know I'm just busting your chops. <laughs> oh, Here we go. I know. Don't worry, I'll probably have a pink scarf on anyway, so that's all right. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with it. There we right. go. Chaos nice. RMK. Beauty. Nice. Yeah. I love those, man. That name, I love. I, that's a beautiful sled. Yeah. I just like oh, the name nice. of it. What a perfect name. Yeah. Off topic of sledding, but there's my boat. Nice. Whereabouts? Oh, cool. Yeah, I love those. Yeah, so you do a lot of... So you, yeah, you were saying you got some slalom tips for me, didn't you? Some slalom <laughs> well, skiing. I was, uh, long story short, I was competing, or I was training to compete uh, about four years ago, and then uh, I was hit by a truck on a bicycle. And, what? Uh, yeah, so I can't really ski that great anymore, but I try. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I was. That's funny, because I was driving a truck one day, and a kid was riding a bike, and I nailed him. Oh, there's water skis everywhere <laughs> just kidding there's a best of both worlds right there yeah yeah there's the best of both you're okay though eh is there any long-term uh, side effects of that right or? now i'm okay but i it was pretty brutal when it happened i was on crutches for just over two years oh my god i went sledding i i would put a garbage bag over my like i was wearing an air cast i put a garbage bag on it and i clipped the crutches to the side of the tunnel and go sledding <laughs> oh that's awesome there's a diehard hey, this is a, you're, yep you're, you're writing all this stuff down that jesse's showing you in case you want to buy everything when he goes to med school yeah that's exactly yeah i'm gonna have to all the boats i don't own the boat my dad owns the boat i don't have that much oh, okay <laughs> okay then i'll just uh i'll just go shack up with your dad then yeah. And we'll do it that way. All right, so we got uh, this one here is, uh, I love these group rides, man. That, that, this is what it's all about. This is from Matthew Elliott. And he says, uh, end of our big loop from New Liskard to Cochrane and back this year. Name the sleds. Hold it. We'll get these up here if we can find them. There we go. 2019 XRSs. There's a 900 turbo. turbo in the back, 19 turbo. And then, I, yeah. 2016 what, is that 2017 ride? free ride? 2016. 2016. That's a 2016, the lava orange, lava red. Yeah. And the one all the way to the left? Oh, that's that's a... 27, 2018 like X. 18, oh, yeah. yep. Yep, 18 X. Nice. Or is this... No, no, that's not an well, 18. Not an that's an XS chassis. That's a 20... Uh, 2017 that would be i think that looks the like XS. the sport color package was it the sport i remember the sport for a few years years had that an x originally i'm not sure maybe he gives us the answers on another on an up and coming email doesn't look like he but did those, those two orange ones are for sure 2019 x yeah. oh hey coda bear is going to hop on i'm going to shoot him the link here just hold on a second here right on sweet little extra Polaris love. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> done, Dakota. Done. Done, done, done. Box there, Gary. I, I got her. You, you, you're up next, bud. Yeah. You're up next. Yeah, for sure. No. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's got a good channel there. Uh, I was, he did, uh, he had that red um, SKS. Yep. Oh, yeah. Right. He said the left is actually a TNT. Yeah. Oh, nice. Perfect. Yeah. Yep. Right. yeah. Oh, nice. Did we do we win T-shirts or anything like that for getting all the sleds right? Right. So this is this is from uh, that's Rich's shadow there if you if you don't recognize it. <laughs> no, that, that's Steve. <laughs> that's, that's the guy Steve. that. Uh, yeah, I remember that was his sled from last year. That was a nice sled. I like that color, man. I like that matte gray. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. sweet. And we got m me. Steve took while out for a ride. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, hold this on. This is. <laughs> oh shit this is your sled right on hang on yeah i'll get this up here uh again i'll uh set it there that's it there. you're getting lots of rides this year oh that looks like shining tree 
but it might not be. <laughs> uh, that no, was one near side of. I believe that was outside of Barry's Bay. Ah, oh, I believe. Indeed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it all looks the same. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Little How'd spindly you like the trees. Skis, uh, Rich, did, did they work good for you? What's that? The stock skis. Yeah, you know what? I didn't. I meant to ask you that because I know you always swapped yours out. I didn't. I didn't think they were that bad. No. Did you but, have the stock carbides on them? Um, about halfway through the season, I put. Um, I went to to a longer one. Okay. But the stock stock carbides on the assaults are way longer than what they put on the regular uh, player sleds. Eh? Did you know oh, that? I didn't know that. Yeah, they're they're a lot longer. Hmm. I think they were ten, and the, and then their regular uh, player sleds have eight. But. Oh wow! Yeah, I had no idea. Coda, what's Coda up? Coda Bear. Come on, how you guys doing? Pretty good. Yeah, what's up? really good, buddy. So I just wanted Looking. to jump in for a second. I want to say I did actually sell my SKS 850 supposedly, um, waiting for the new sled to come in. So we'll see how that works out. What are you, what are you getting? Uh, I'm going for the uh, Matrix. So we're gonna go right. back to an assault, but I want the new Matrix chassis. Nice, so, nice, nice. nice. With the 850. Yeah, with the, with the yeah, nice, perfect, perfect. Yeah, yeah. If it's as good as what the uh, what the the hype is saying, then you're gonna Nunzio love it. Thinks they're pretty good. Well, I mean, they, they finally says looks it. like they went through and actually did the stuff that we want at player. Like they listened to the feedback, and hopefully, I mean, extra storage in the front, a um, little slimmer design in the middle, and. I, they have the attachments, but one thing I don't like, as far as I know, they still do not have a gas caddy, which is lacking in my opinion. Mm-hmm. You know, Skidoo definitely has that gas caddy, and yeah. that is something that you need. Especially, I went to Maine for a week, and I was almost out of gas every time. You I would do that way. get the uh, adapter kits so you can put the link accessories on them. The yeah, I, like I had I had that on yeah. and it'll be going on. It'll be going on my uh, Matrix this year too. The so, yeah, the, the, the accessories. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's wild technologies. Like South Simcoe Machine, there's a bunch of them. Yeah, yeah South, South Simcoe Machine would ship down to Yakota um, if you want to look them up. He, he has his own custom made, and they look really good. Really yeah. good. I have them on my desk. Yeah. They're awesome. Yeah, South yeah. Simcoe Machine. Simcoe yeah, Machine? So. No, South, yeah. South Simcoe. South Simcoe, okay. And the yeah. beauty part about it is you can get the stackable jerry can, and then you can also have a bag. That would be nice, yes, yes for sure, yeah. especially on the yeah. longer rides. But my thing is, is I can't remember. But isn't the 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 matrix rear end isn't it like inch shorter or something? So I don't know if the the accessories are going to match this. I year. would reach out to the South Simcoe machine because he's probably either maybe he hasn't done it yet or he will. But once they get a hold of a matrix, they'll make one designed. Yeah, better. but the the T slots are the same. You'll fit. You'll have no. The R slots are good. Okay, because yeah, I couldn't. They're, they're, they're identical. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because I couldn't remember. Someone I thought said it was going to be an inch off or different than the slots on the the other chassis. Um, but no, because they would, they would have pissed off all the other people that are that have bought all those <laughs> other bags. Like, that Brent bag was like $400. Well, it was mm-hmm. 500, bucks, 500 bucks up here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah wow. wow. Down here, I think it was like 299 maybe. I think is what that bag yeah. was going for. Yeah, we got Canadian tire money up here. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm going to send you this picture, Gary, of uh, mine on my sled. If you can fire it up here so Coda can see it here. Yeah, I'll for sure. Email right here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fire another one up here, too. So, yeah, Coda, I love your content, man. I started watching you a couple of years ago. I appreciate it. Um, nice job. It's been rough. Uh, I haven't posted since the main trip. I only got one video up. Uh, I ended up losing 90% of my footage, and it just it really did not oh, work no. out. Yeah. Yeah. Really. The ninety percent. I have like one video that I could make, but it's not the same footage. You know, it's it's the last two days that I was there, and a lot there was a lot of snow melt. It was like fifty degrees, and it just was not the way I wanted it. Yeah. So this yeah. is VR. Is that your your sled that you had before, or no? This is Scott Bianchi. He's just a okay. fan. I'm just pulling these out of email. If you email fanfold at mudbrats dot com, uh, we'll get your picture up on screen here. You guys are the stars tonight. You know, we're getting some really good. Some really good shots. I sent you another so, pretty good one. Yeah. yeah, I see that. I got it. I got it right now. It's coming up next. I'm gonna get riches. I'm gonna get riches up here first. Here, um, putting you to work over there, Gary. I know. <laughs> Just fire him off to him. 
that. Oh, there we go. That's a great, this is a great shot illustrated here. Is this a South Simcoe kit or who's is this, no, Rich? I got that. It's from iTech Industries out of Quebec. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's, it's, it's awesome, man. It's oh, that's perfect. Machine. I bought the, yeah. uh, the link locks from them I bought this year. Yep, yep. You can awesome. see it right there, man. It's It works awesome, man. You just yeah. you just put them in the T slot and line them up, and I put a little bit yeah, of blue lock right on them, and it, they didn't move at all, like didn't budge at all. Huh. So after good. after this, and maybe you add me on Facebook, you can send me the link for that because I'm probably yeah. gonna definitely look into that. Yeah, no problem. I can send them to you, but they're uh, they're good to, and relatively cheap. I think it was eighty dollars Canadian. Yeah, know, so that's like that's cheap. like twenty bucks U.S. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and they're good quality. They're machined. They're iodized. Anodized. Yeah, anodized. yeah. 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 Oh yeah, this is uh, this is it with the big uh, the big honking bag on it. Yeah, I ended up going with Perfect. the uh, tw- the turtle, the, the SR twenty one. Yeah, yeah, it's the a teenage good bag, mutant man. ninja turtles, teenage mutant yeah. ninja it's turtles. turtles because it's a dry bag, so everything well, nothing gets wet. Just, just think how many how many clothes uh, Mark could pack in that, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you could put his blizzard in the back of that. I think. Yeah, yeah. I've gone on five days with all my clothes just in that bag. That's oh, awesome. Hell, easily, it's it's huge, man. That's why I grabbed it. We just gotta push it into the sides because it's like a formed structure, so you can just squeeze it into the yep. corner. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I hope to use that a lot more this year on the uh, on the new Matrix. So, oh, Rich, man, this is uh, this is great. Uh, this is one of my favorite stops, uh, right What's here. That? Oh yeah, I sent that to you. I thought you'd like that, bud. I'll go. Yeah, I love this. Yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, Steve and Rick. Rick's the other fellow that rides with us. He's got the four-stroke uh, skidoo. Steve, Steve's got the BB. That, yeah. Steve's this nope. guy here with the yellow nope. BB. Steve, Steve Jim. That's Steve in the back there with the Zexier, and that's Rick there with the yellow BB too. He's the one with nice. the, skidoo, the four-stroke. The yeah. BB one twelve B. Is that what the trail's called there again? Forget. Uh, that's the one up near the. Uh, you know when they, they they closed it down? There's well, they didn't close it down, but there was logging just. Yeah, yeah. Back. This that was, shelter is at the intersection of three trails. Yeah, that's right. Yes, it is. Yeah, the one twelve B. I think when you're coming north from uh, Dorset, you bump into it on your way to Kearney. Oh, yeah. like we 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 came back from Kearney to find that, and it's like I want to find it, want to find it, and we're coming back, and it's like I had no idea where we were, and I lost. I'm going, this is totally the wrong way, and then all of a sudden we come around the corner, and boom, there it is. And I get off my there. sled, and I said to the guys, Yeah, I knew right where to get air. Yeah, I knew where we're going. D one oh one B. I knew I knew where we were going the whole time. Did I show this one yet? Yeah, I think it's so like thirty it's, kilometers north of Dorset. It's not far. Yeah, it's a it's a great stop. Um, yeah, it's nice trails up there. I love that area, man. Most favorite. This is like the reveal. Oh, that's the oh, same trail Mark Bow was on, I think. Yeah, is that it is the one? Bit? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or the yeah. um yeah, the hydro cut. Uh, out of Algonquin uh, Park there, yep. Yeah. 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 That's not in Algonquin. That's, that, uh, that's not it? It's south, south of uh, Algonquin, isn't it? Yeah. It's right near... Uh, is that Bala? Bala? Oh, it's out near Bala. Yeah. Okay. It's like just across oh, the highway. Okay. Yeah, I got you. It's like the trails we ride way up north. Um, yeah, that goes all the way to Sudbury. Yeah. yeah. Nice. That free ride's sweet, man. Yeah. It's crappy on the trails, but... Is it? Yeah, yeah. He's got to get rid of the warnings. He's got to get rid of all the warning stickers. That's yeah, the first I thing I do when I get a sled home. It does. That's my. Sit that's seconds, my big. I get the heat gun and I pull all the warning decals off. He'll leave yeah, that's my big. The can on. I don't get that's it. my bet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's my big pet peeve. But cans are too, but uh, the uh, the the warning labels like it's. Uh, uh, it drives me crazy. Being a graphics guy, I think it makes it worse, right? Oh, yeah. It's the same as ugly numbers. When uh, when um, when Mike got his new 850, his first one, it's like he showed he was showing pictures, and I and I finally just threw him a number kit in the mail for free. I said, "Buddy, you got to change them up. Life's too short for ugly numbers." Yeah, they're <laughs> numbers. Yeah. Deal, dealer numbers. Right. My dealer just is, offered me custom numbers. I didn't even have to pay extra for it. Yeah, that's nice. Some of them do a good What's job. What's that article the back? ZL? Old ZL, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, it's uh, but this is from Austin Harris. He doesn't ready to go with this winner. He says, doesn't say anything else there. <laughs> oh, we here's another stuck uh, photo. Let me oh see boy. Here. Oh yeah, this one deep. This we don't see anything black. Oh, we lost it. No, nope, we got it. I have to flip them. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's steep. Yeah. <laughs> I got some photos from Maine too. Guys running one twenties, and it was about that same deep. It yeah, was, it was not. <laughs> nice. It was not fun getting them out. That's for sure. No, no, the eight fifties have no issue spinning a one twenty. That's Hopping for sure. And puffing. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. Gary, I sent you some photos too. Perfect. Perfect. Hey, uh, Mike. Do you know Bobby? You know Mike Ludwig? Oh yeah. Yeah. Do, do you mind if he sends you pictures of you and your underwear out on the trail? Uh, you know, I'm curious how he got them, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's the gang. What hey, do you nice. remember about that? You, hey. Is there a story to that pick there, so, Bobby? Uh, that that, that was the time that I. The Absolutely. That was the time yeah. that Mike and I rode together, and the uh, guy that bought my original assault joined yeah. us. Yeah. And uh, that's so that's my 2017 assault in the middle. It started it all. And then uh, off to the left is my 2019. And then to the right is Mike's uh, Indy XC 600. Nice. That's sweet. I actually yeah, ran sweet. into Mike up north also. We didn't get to ride together, but. Nice. Definitely stopped and yeah, had he's a awesome, chat. dude. Yeah. Nice. How did you like? Uh, I mean, obviously you love the the 850 better, Bobby. But that your orange 800 was a nice slip too, right? You like that? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it, it started it all for me. Like, I took a pretty big leap going to Assault and going back to Polaris. I'd been on Skidoo for a while, and you know it was yep. fast. It was so light, and I just the ergonomics on the axis are just they're awesome. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I was super comfortable on it. I really loved that sled and being able to customize so much of it. You know, tunnel mm -hmm. color, spindle, body color, all that. That's awesome. That's what yeah. I missed this year, right, when they brought out the Matrix. I was really disappointed. Man. I mean, I went with black and gray again anyway, so yeah, I was all right. But I was like, man, wish they would have had a little more colors. But they'll probably come out next year. Yeah. And get to choose everything. I see Nunzio's sled there, and I see Mike's sled there. Is that in cap? This is Cap across from Nassau Station. This is from Mike. There you go. You can, you can tell yeah. Nunzio's uh, screen because it's white. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. He's hanging out with all the players. Oh, look, at he let the skidoo get really close. That's probably the closest <laughs> it's ever been. I love his pictures last year when he's a he's a Polaris ambassador and yeah. he's going away on all these trips with Mike, but there's not a picture of Mike's brand new sled that he's so <laughs> proud of. It's all Polaris in the pictures. Yeah. So I, I go riding with Mike. I go, hey, Mike, how come uh, your sled never got any airplay on the on the old nuns channel there <laughs> that's funny, yeah. yeah that's a great i love these group rides man that's awesome i love riding that's, in that area it's great yeah actually jeremy and, and i were there but we were 30 miles down the road with his hood up <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i remember nice um kyle johnson first ride too eh? oh wonderful <laughs> Um, Kyle Johnson asked in chat, uh, what part of Maine do you ride? Um, I got to go up to around the Lake Parlin area um, is where I went. There's a lodge up there, um, and we got a house up there for a week with a couple of guys that I met up. And that area is actually really nice. So if you ever want to go to Maine, look for Lake Parlin. The road is really bad to get there. It's very uh, bumpy because of the, the frost bringing the, the road up and down. But that area, there's a lot of nice trails. You can go, I think it's Corborn is like a, a 3,000 3, elevation that you can go up top and look out and you can see literally everything around you. Um, but then also like you can go and you can ride off trail up there. You know, if, if there's a big open field, you know, on the edge of the seasonal road, you can go and hit it. Like you're, you're good to go. So awesome. if you ever look the area would go to Maine, that's, that's where I would go. Love this next pick here. Check out what's hanging in the trees. <laughs> I love it. Uh, also, Rich, I see you've been down this trail before. <laughs> Gary, which one's yours? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that one right there. Oh, the big sorry. one. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, so it's a picture of all the sleds and there's all these bras hanging in the trees. That's a that's gotta be a New York thing, because when I go skiing in that uh, somewhere in Ontario too though. I don't remember where. Uh, actually you know where it is? It's uh it's in um 
Uh, mm. Just after Weber's, uh, what's that little river, the the rock cut there? And Draw. you go to the, uh, you, it's um, uh, Severn, Severn Bridge. Oh, and there, it's yeah. Severn Bridge, Ontario. You just turn off there and go towards Perry Sound, and it's one road over, and there's a whole fence full of bras. Like, I'm talking, there isn't fence. It's all bras. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, if that's what you're thinking of. But, no, when I go skiing in Mardi Gras, they have the, the on the chairlift that everyone throws their, their That's bras. That's what I'm and, thinking of. I'm thinking yeah. about skiing. They see, I see them at ski resorts all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's uh, Holiday Valley, New York. And the uh, I threw a set of underwear up, up in the trees. I got a video of it um, <laughs> in there. So, yeah. Yeah. My wife wasn't too pleased. <laughs> <laughs> that ditch bang. But... <laughs> hey, don't call her that. <laughs> <laughs> The Here we go. This is from Cohen. Nice. Another one. That's Jeremy's sled there, I think. What is that, Cohen? Oh, where'd it go? 2002 it MX Zeta 800. Nice. Oh, yeah. Nice. Nice machine. Tips up Tuesday on the uh, on the 600 from Robbie Bell. Let's see what he's got here. Holy goodness. This is cool. All you see is a blue wow. belly pan. This thing's wow. <laughs> oh. it's wide open. Yeah. What size is that? An eight fifty or what is that? Did he say it's a six hundred? No, no, there you go. I yeah. There you go. Must have hit a rock. <laughs> <laughs> Richard with his SRX seven hundred. This is his two thousand. Oh, you want to yeah. talk about a wide body man? Holy. Oh, that thing. You know what? I had that sucker dialed in. I had a roller rooster on it. That thing, What's that? That that thing. That was the clutch. The clutch. That's that thing. Good. That thing hauled. The Olin. Look at look at the front suspension though. Like I mean that's and you want to talk about a park bench. That's yeah. Really fast. They I, rode I, good though. Like the rear suspension oh, yeah. on these things are so nice. I mean the yeah, front is too. But let's let have piggybacks. What yeah, that was those were Olins. Yeah. Those they they were the first ones to come out with the uh, the reservoirs on the shocks. Didn't even know they had it back then. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now is that the triple or is that the seven hundred triple? triple? That thing was like I said was stupid oh, yeah. fast. Yeah, my buddy he has the seven hundred triple and I think it's the O yeah. three, and yeah. it it runs phenomenal and I love the sound of it. Like when you, you oh, hear it behind you, you know it's like you oh, walk man, in there's that little like, yummy, the yeah. yummy sound. That's what I was gonna say is you can't beat the sound of them triples. No, no they, they were can't. the. They were the national anthem of snowmobiling back in the day. Yep, yep, the uh, sure. triples. You, you heard them on the lake. And the like, national oh, anthem. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Please it's rise screaming. for the national anthem. Yeah. You know what? They, 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 there's, a, there's a guy near here, and he has two of them, SRX 700s. Or, no, uh, they weren't SVX 700s, right? Oh, and, yes, and No, no. It's a, it, it looks just like the one you had. Oh, okay. I don't know what the numbers, the letters. Maybe it was a SR. Yeah. Oh, SRX. SRX. Yeah, and yeah. he's got uh, seventeen thousand K, and he hasn't touched a thing on him. No, Two of them. Were, they were yeah. there So here we go. This is Cohen, four forty drifter. <laughs> now on this on this note, did you guys all, everybody, even in the chat, let's see how many did it. Did you guys email the mayor up in Cochrane about the uh, saving that snowmobile museum? Yep. We got to do it, man. It's in the vi Thanks, it's man. in the video. The uh, yeah. yeah, so he had he had some good news this week that they're going to open discussion again on it, but it's not a done deal yet. So I don't get it. I don't get yeah. why it, they want to take it down. It makes no sense. To it's poli It's politics. They want the building, yeah. right? So I skipped yeah, a couple of them. Politics that don't even snowmobile. It's hard. Yeah. Hey Cohen, I I skipped a couple of pictures, Cohen. But if there's one you want, if you got a story you want to see, just let me know and I'll pop it up. Yeah. Because sure. I've got a bunch. I've got a bunch that come in. So just to be fair yeah. with the other other people in here. So. Oh, yeah, I couldn't figure out how to send them all together. <laughs> no, that's cool. I gotta find this one again. Here, this is here from the pad. This when you were talking about. Uh, my buddy Mike Eisenberg, he uh, changed his voicemail on his phone or his uh, ringtone for me to Brap. So whenever I call him, he knows it's me because it goes Brap, Brap. That's awesome. <laughs> he knows exactly cool. who to call him. <laughs> Hold on, I got too many windows open here. 
So Bob, I got a question for you about uh, the chassis on um, the Polaris. Mm -hmm. One video you were saying that for a taller guy, and and I'm a taller guy, that the Polaris was a more comfortable sled than the Skidoo. Yep. Absolutely. So the uh, the G4, I feel like is it's a nice kind of middle ground, but the the Pro Cross chassis, the Articat, feels like it's meant for someone a little bit shorter. Uh, I, I have pictures where you can see me sitting on it and my, my knees really bent because it's, it's, you know, just for a smaller rider. Right. And like I said, the skidoo's kind of in the middle and then the axis. If you're like six foot and above, it's hard to find anything more comfortable than that. They did okay. lower the seat half an inch this year for the Matrix, so I'm kind of yeah. curious to see how that is. But Well, yeah. I'm six two, so I'm, I'm a pretty tall guy. So Yeah, I, you would definitely be very comfortable on an axis. And you could probably make a G4 work for you, but um, with a Pro Cross, with how soft the seat is, you'd probably be pretty uncomfortable on an Articat. Okay. Not good to know. Yeah. Yeah. Stick with Skidoo, man. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, Polaris people. Hey, Polaris, listen. Uh, this, I've always been a Polaris guy. This is the first time I've been home, so. This one, this one came from, uh, from Austin Harris. This is from this past winter in Star Lake in Wisconsin. And can you believe how steep this hill is and they're not falling off of it? <laughs> like, that's that's got to be studded tracks. Almost a backflip. Yeah. Like, the, i I seen circus performers do that where they stand on this pole and it makes them look like they're standing straight out of it. These guys have that perfect. Yeah, I love it. Uh, Raymond says the bra tree was cancer awareness. Oh, nice. There was a pink bow on the tree. That's the big thing that I painted on. And it's in... Kalkaska, Michigan. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. John Ferguson, here you go, Gary, my old Rev. Oh, sweet. This is nice. Nice X package. Here we go. Hold on. Hopefully, I don't lose this here. I think Skidoo should start including piggybacks on their X packages. I think that's an issue. Yeah. I think they should give more options for shocks in general. I yeah, love like a like a Fox Q3 or something like that, like like, like or, yeah, Al, or really Alka cool. right from the dealer. You buy an X package and your shocks. The only difference between those shocks and the other ones is that they're rebuildable. Besides yeah. that, there's no piggyback, and it's like yeah. spending more money. What's the point? Yeah, you yeah. Get the Ford adjustable riser, and you get uh, I don't even know what else is different besides the Ford adjustable riser and the gauge package. There's no difference. Well, the the XRS is a, an inch forward on the on the steering post. The XRS, and what, not the X package. Yeah, no, the XR the X package doesn't have that. No. Yeah. No, it, sh so it shock seats and gauges. Is yeah. Basically, it. Right. <laughs> I hear so. a lot of people saying that the seat on the uh, 900 Turbo, whether it's the XRS or not an XRS, is not as comfortable as the 850 seat, the narrower seat. Like my buddy. Oh, is that right? 900 Turbo. He's. He took the seat off and he bought an A50 seat because he can't stand it. Oh, really, eh? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if the XRS seat is a little more stiff compared to the regular one, but he put my seat on his machine last year and he was like, wow, it's like a night and day difference. Well, that's that's your sled, right Bobby, there. isn't it? Looks yeah. a lot like it, yeah. Nice oh, this picture. is from Sam Samuel da Derry. Yeah. Um, he says, here's a photo of my assault on the right and two friends also riding assaults. Love that sled. Can't wait for winter. Heck that yeah. gray line was nice color. I it was that one there. I yeah, love that, man. That's a sick looking sled. Yeah. I, I like I like <laughs> blue, the blue and lime better. <laughs> Looks just like yeah. your old one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a the the free ride takeoff, right? Yeah. You know Did you ever mean? figure like, out where your sled ended up, Coda? I do not actually, yeah. unfortunately. Um, it went. It was supposed to go to a guy that I did know, and then he backed out, and then all of a sudden I found out. Because I had already picked up my other one, and the dealer just dumped it off somewhere. I think it went to, I think it went out to Michigan. I think someone drove really, really far away to come get it. That's crazy! Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. they, they wanted deal? that specific thing. You still dealing yeah. with Quebecas? Uh? Yeah, yeah. I still oh, yeah. go through Quebecas, Polaris. Um, Rick's a good guy there, um, and and just honestly, like the pricing, like the price point yeah. through him in the area, I. I get it cheaper through him. So, and they take care of everything for me. I just drop it off. It's done that day. You know, they push me to the front of the line if I have an issue, and, yeah. and that's just how you know you get a good dealer like that. And you want to stick with them. So, 
firm believer of staying with the same dealer and buying with buying sleds through them every other year or every few years and you build a rapport with them and then they're always there when you need, when you need when you have exactly them. i mean if i have a problem with my sled i mean i just reach out to him on facebook and yeah. like even if it's a sunday and it's off you know he'll he'll get back to me right away and yeah and we nice. just figure out i had actually some issues with the gauge last year and he was able to figure it out real quick you know he knew what it was he said bring it in and we'll slap one in quick because i was supposed to go to maine and yeah, I had he had it done in five hours. Done. Yeah. yeah. Done okay. you, do, you do a lot of off trail, don't you? More than you're you're not so much a trail guy, are you, Coda, that that you are off trail? That's how uh, that's how I take you anyway. I mean that's what I would like uh to do, but obviously in New York you really can't do that. Um that's why I wanted to go to Maine. That's why I went to Maine and we did about five hundred miles like off trail, logging trails, up in, in the woods and I'll tell you what. I have an appreciation for it because that is some hard work if you ever get up there and do it. Oh, yeah. You got to be in good shape, man, for that. We were oh, talking man. about I'm, I'm not bad shape, but I'm not in good shape either, man. And it, it was rough. It was definitely rough. Yeah. Out of breath quick. and But it's fun. It's a great time. I would love to do more off trail. But as you know, New York is you, you're not really supposed to. You're not supposed to go anywhere. So, you know, hit some oh. drifts, hit some stuff like right there on the edge of the trail, but don't go off trail. I got, yeah. I got in trouble for that, so don't want to yeah. do that. Uh, is it patrolled heavily, like where you ride for off trail? Like I seen that one picture, Bobby, or one video, of Bobby and his dad, and there's a gang of them in the pit. There's a pit that you guys are messing around in. That's and Olson University. Uh, they are also a group of YouTubers that we met up with and rode with. Um, that pit is a little hidden spot up in Old Forge, but I think it's 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 the state land, so. I think you really can't get in trouble for that a little bit. It's not. It wasn't posted. It wasn't a posted property. So, you know, you take that spots where it's not posted at state land and you kind of just go with it and hope that you're not going to get caught or anything. I mean, it shouldn't be illegal, but it's such a gray area. You don't know. Yeah. In yeah. Ontario, you just got to be careful and make sure you're on crown land. And then if you're on crown land, have fun. And if not, don't go off trail. Yeah. 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 That's, that's definitely, but you know, it's fun. So, and I think everyone needs that little bit, you know, a little bit of both. Like I love to ride trail. I love to ride with Bobby, his dad, you know, my dad, like it's, it's nice to get out and enjoy it with a group of guys, stop, have lunch, you know, and that's, that's really what snowmobiling is all about, but it's also really fun to get out there and rip in the snow, the fresh snow. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jumpman24 says, hey, guy, luckily, luckily stumbled on the stream. I'm in the market for a new sled trying to decide between the 850 SKS. Thanks to Coda or the Assault 850. He's so confused. <laughs> <laughs> They're, two different, They're two different sleds, really. It's, it's two different sleds. It's all about preference, right? So for me, um, I enjoyed the SKS more than the Assault. But the Assault is such an overall great sled. Like, if you're really more of going to do trail and hardly do off trail, you've got to go with the assault. The assault corner is better. I mean, it just eats the bumps better. Just everything about it is better. Now the SKS, you go with a shorter uh, spindle in the front. Uh, it's adjustable, I think 39 to 41. I rode at 39. It's one of those things that at first it's super, super tippy. And you're like, you think you're going to go over every corner. You, know, you can't rail them as hard. But once you get used to it and you can throw your weight, you really can start keeping that ski down. And you, you know, honestly, you hardly can tell the difference once you really get used to it. I'm sure if I jump back on an assault, I could be like, okay, you know, that's definitely way better. It's more planted. It corners harder. You know, you don't really get as much ski lift, um, anything like that. So it's it's all about preference. Are you going to do more trail riding or are you going to do more off trail? The SKS no. is way more playful than the assault. Where does the chaos fit into that? Is it is it a higher level of mountain than the SKS? I thought SKS was the true mountain sled and the chaos kind of fills a void between the two or am i wrong on that so well the sled that i had was the sks 146 so it it was a 2.25 inch lug that was it's it's that 70 30 type of, of crossover so it's yeah. like 70 percent off and 30 percent on trail like it still will hold its own it doesn't overheat you can still run it especially with a 41 inch setting on it you can still keep the skis planted um the chaos is the 155 with the 2.6 inch that is more of the more playful wheeling all over the place um side hill and you can spin around and, and do your 180s way easier whereas the pro rmk is the real real mountain sled and that is 
it keeps the front end down and, and you can go up through a huge line and be fine. So the chaos is the next step up from the SKS. So it goes. Uh, I got you. Okay. SKS chaos, and then if, if you want to go legit mountain, you're going into the Pro Arm K. I got you. I think the Assault is one of the best 50-50 if you compare it to the other brands. Yeah. yeah. I did ride the Backcountry XRS from Skidoo, though. I will have to give them props. That was a fun sled to ride on. It did handle really good. Just for me, uh, I mean, I'm sure that the one I rode, they just messed with the limiter strap, so you couldn't really get the skis off the ground. Um, but I like that playfulness from Hilaris. Uh, but yeah, I, I, think, have, uh, yeah. I think Snow Tracks did a video on it, and they were saying that the, uh, the Polaris, the Assault is much better at 50-50, while the background check for us is more like a 70-30. Yeah, 70-30, 60-40, um, depending on the track package. If you go yeah. with a glitch lug on it, 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 it's getting back to closer to 50-50. Yeah. Yeah. I'm no, and that's the thing. Still... The skidoo, the skidoo, the skidoo they, they make it to keep the skis down now, too. If it was a new one, the, the 2021, um, they, they made they made that front end more planted. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the... That far, and you can bring it back to 2020 if you choose. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Nice. Bobby, what were you going to say? I'm just surprised that even this year with the Matrix, they haven't put an adjustable spindle on the Assault just, yet. It seems I'm, like a a bit of a missed uh, opportunity because they redesigned the spindle, but it's still not adjustable. Yeah, I was very upset about that myself. Going yeah. from the SKS, having that adjustable spindle yeah. was so nice because you and it was so easy. Like I could pop, I could adjust it in ten minutes. Yep. I could adjust it from forty one to thirty nine in ten minutes, and it, it made it completely different. Yeah, it would really bring the assault to I think the ultimate fifty fifty slide if you could narrow it up just a hair from trail width or go a little wider if you needed to you know what i mean yeah and you yeah. used what did you go through again on your assault the uh Zollinger, was it Zollinger i had the i had the mountainside products mountainside offset spindles side. yeah so they could go from 42 inches or 42.5 inches to 41.5 to 40.5 and it was just an awesome feature to have and it, it's it sucks they don't come with them from the factory yeah. i'm definitely gonna have to reach out to him this year and see if he has something because being like when i go to maine i'm gonna want the 40 and a half like yeah if, that's just how it's going to be. I mean, yeah. I imagine that what he already builds will still fit it because the A-arms and everything are the same. It's just an updated yeah. spindle. So he doesn't say on his website they will yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if they end up fitting it. Yeah. Pretty now, sure there's new, another. Yeah. The new skidoos, you can adjust the uh, the width. There's like a, a little, not a washer, but like a space filler on one side of the ski, and you can take the ski off and put it on the other side if you choose. Yeah, bushing. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's the same as what Bobby had there, the mountain side. Right? Yeah, how, yeah, how hard was it to switch? Once you got it installed, how hard was it to switch uh, back? So, like, from 40.5 to 42.5. Like, say I wanted to go, you know, to ride the trails with you one day, and I wanted to go back to 42.5. How easy would it be to, to swap it out? It's just so there's, like, a bushing that goes in the spindle, and it hangs out a little bit past the edge of the spindle, and then you have two other bushings that go over it. So you'd put two on the inside if you want it as narrow as possible, one on each side for the middle, or two on the outside if you want it as wide as possible. Gotcha, or, so that was the same as my SKS then? Yep, exactly. Okay, because that's, that's way easier. Because I know in yeah. your video, I thought you were installing it, it was taking a while, and I wasn't sure exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Six Ring Brian uh, just moved to New Brunswick looking to get a first sled. Not sure if he should buy used. Nothing wrong with a used sled, but I think in today's market, the you have to watch the pricing because the pricing is is right up there. So shop shop new, shop used at the dealer as well because there's a lot of dealers I've seen with sleds that are have better prices than, than what's out there in the uh in the used market and the dealer will also offer sometimes a 30-day warranty or or what have you on it or at least yeah. they'll stand behind their product you know mm -hmm. so it's yeah the 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 used sleds are getting crazy it's like they're 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 being in in at least in ontario they're being snapped up sight unseen and for top dollar like i mean ridiculously top dollar so you have to know what you're looking at when you go and you got to be ready if you do get a chance to see the sled uh, ahead of time you got to be willing to to know what you're looking at and snap it up if it's a good deal or not but i mean just knowing what my buddy's going through trying to replace that 1200 it's not a fun process and he's and he needs to get back into it this year so you know 
but uh, yeah. Yeah, Cohen says, if you're buying used, just be careful. Take someone with you that knows what they're looking at too. Or, you know, and that's the thing, reach out on groups, Facebook groups, and see if there's anyone in your area that would would have a have a second set of eyes on it with you. You know, we used to, we laugh, because and if Dino's watching, he'll laugh his ass off, because we we used to have code words when we when we go see sleds together and it's like is that the is this the same one that my buddy doug had and he'd say yes or no that mean buy it or not right no this isn't at all like doug's and it's you know what i mean and and that would be the code to say uh walk away from it porter it's not a good deal so yeah it's like we yeah we did that well that's when i got back into the we did it for years ago but just most recently was when i, when I got that 04 800 ho same deal right so yeah, first thing I look yeah. at is miles. If it's over a certain amount of miles, especially for a two-stroke, I wouldn't even look at it. Uh, I don't. I disagree with that. If it's rebuilt properly, I oh, it's, it's good. Yeah. Every every part on a on a snowmobile is replaceable. Every single part you can pick up a catalog and and build a sled from scratch. If you have an empty tunnel, I can build you a sled from from Very aftermarket cool. parts. <laughs> and and you know so I. I if it's high miles bushings bearings that kind of thing have they been replaced you factor that into the cost it's all easy work um so you just have to find someone to do it or do it yourself but you factor that into the price you know if it's there i I don't i don't shy away with too high miles especially if it's a keeper and it's been rebuilt properly right so it's what you can afford too right so my go ahead go ahead you go ahead i i uh scary story we had so when the uh 08 xps came out i had a tnt and i took it in because the gauge stopped working so they plugged it into buds they gave it back it worked but my miles were zero so when i took it back in to trade it in we told them hey look something wiped the miles you guys did it but so it reads it at 600 miles but it actually has 2600 miles and they're like well we'll just sell it with what it says and I saw that sled later on being sold with 5,000 miles, and it actually had 7,600 miles on it, which is a scary thought. Yeah. Usually you can tell when you hook it up the buds that it, it, mileage and hours, mi- mileage yeah, and yeah. hours. So so you can do the math. That's the thing. It's a, yep. If you know both those numbers. But, you know, when you're buying used, you don't have the ability to take a guy with a buds computer and go, oh, yeah, no, it's got, you know, a million hours on it but it's only got four thousand miles how's that how's that you know yeah, even exactly. possible so yeah Some people, and that's the thing. I, can, i've seen people that have like unplugged their gauge and then they run it for like a season or two with no gauge plugged in and then they plug it back in and sell it and machine it, it's just dishonesty and it's, it's yeah not- yeah well i'm i'm my gauge is going like it sometimes you shut it off it doesn't go down to the the speedo and the tack don't set down to zero yeah. so adam says the gauge is going on it and if i lose it riding it'll, i'll lose hand grip and everything so i've got a guy looking for the the one with closest mileage as possible to what's on that sled but i it had a new crate engine put in at 7800 kilometers so I, I i've got that proof on paperwork to say yeah you know here's dealer installed blah 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 and and maintain throughout so that's the other thing you need paperwork i've seen lots of people that say oh the machine's been rebuilt the chocks have been rebuilt i'm like okay prove it and they're like i don't have any paperwork i'm like so i'm supposed to take you at face <laughs> yeah it's like that mike castellet guy he, for sure <laughs> <laughs> uh finn says our 2015 skidoo 800 slow mine's just not as fast as a switchback 137 800 it, what what you've got a 137 is it a renegade or is it an MX, mxz on that fin the the rene the switchback 137 if you're on a mxz is going to have a traction advantage for sure and you know it could very well be a faster sled the not all, there's so many factors go into it you know track tension everything so um if your 800 is not maintained and not tuned then yeah it would be it could be slower than that one but you know, you'll beat him to the gas. You, you'll beat him past all the gas pumps. That's for sure. It also depends <laughs> on the track, right? One could be a 1.5. The other could be a 1.25. That would make a huge difference. Totally. Totally. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's like you said, it's a iron dog. So that'd be a 129. Yeah, it would be yeah. a 129. Yeah. Those, yeah. those are sweet sleds. Yeah. It got beat by a 121 rush too. 
Hmm. Yeah. No, they don't make the underdog. Yeah. No, so. Actually, there's a guy in your neck of the woods, uh, Bobby, that's actually going in the Iron Dog. Um, and uh, I actually reached out to him to be on the show. Oh, nice. So he, Yeah, yeah. So I'm just waiting to hear back from him now and, and maybe What's we can get ride? him on it. Uh, I don't, I think it's a Polaris, actually. Mm. Nice. Um, yeah, I just quickly seen it when I was on, on vacation. I was sitting on the dock and shot the guy a, a message. So I'm waiting to hear back from him. Awesome. Bring extra fuel and extra oil. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. One one twenty eight. Hmm. I'm just surprised because I've I've heard the one twenty one rushes don't have a lot of top speed because they have a really aggressive approach angle on the track. Yeah. So yeah. if he's getting beat on top, it's a little surprising. Uh, how many how many K are on that the Iron Dog? Maybe it's in, maybe it's low compression. Maybe it's due for for a top end. Could be, you know. There's a lot of factors, you know. If they're if they're new out of the box, there shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be a huge difference, right? Yeah. But uh, you know, when they're when they're used, could be in myriad of things, you know. And some some just get sluggish, you know. Mm -hmm. They're not they're not a fast seven thousand miles new top end. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So again, that's not that's not yeah. huge miles. Yeah, my buddy had the exact same sled as me, and he would always pull past me, and we never could figure out why. <laughs> yeah. Identical Once, machine. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Is so, the 850 really that much better than the 800? Should I be only looking at a new 850 or maybe a 2019 800 for much cheaper? They're both good. They, yeah, the 850 is a beast. If it's, it's, if, it's, uh, if it's about price, I mean, an eight, you can't go wrong with an 800, but 850 is definitely fun. It is definitely yeah. fun. But I, I mean, the 800 hauls too, though. Yeah, if it's your first sled, then the 800 is a safe bet, and you'll have a lot of fun on it, and it'll scare you. You know, like it'll it'll straighten your arms, and and at, like my 800 Renegade at, at 70 miles an hour, 75 miles an hour, it was ready to play. And you know, you got to be. I think I mentioned that in a previous video. Is you have to actually practice when you're in those zones because if you don't you learn the handling characteristics and how it breaks and stuff at speed because it'll get you into trouble that you can't get out of faster than you want so don't lock up and the that's track. that's the truth with all those big bores right so but an 800 is fun and i mean that's the thing do the clutch on it and and uh <clears throat> and do some tweaking to it and you uh you'll love an 800. yeah four to six thousand dollars difference in price is what he's looking at between it's coming off of fifty or yeah for an eight hundred fifty yeah. and a twenty nineteen yeah yeah he's coming off a twenty fifteen pro RMK I imagine the next couple of years that difference is going to close up because you know Polaris isn't doing the snow check only on the eight fifty anymore I think that really drove the prices up and that's going to end now so mm -hmm. yeah. this yeah. this next year you're going to see a difference yeah. for sure yeah I think Polaris my buddy used to always buy one model previous so when the 850 came out he bought the new 800 uh from the dealer no miles new it was it was uh leftover inventory and he would get killer deals like yeah. unbelievable deals but now he's into the 850 market and the it's it's right it's there with skidoo it's right there with skidoo so you're looking at what fits you better what what feels better for you and especially with the new vr1 and and matrix it's the 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 controls look better. The screen's nice. Like it's they've closed the gap for sure. If not, even raised the bar a bit. But yeah. you know, do do can fight back. They're all fighting each other. The more they fight, yeah. the better. They're also offering zero percent on eight hundred and five percent on the eight fifty. Take the zero percent. That's money yeah. in your bank, man. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, they, yeah. they just released that. I think it's zero percent for forty eight months. So I just saw that. Yeah, so you can get another deal the first 12 months because of COVID. What was that? Skidoo has uh, no payments for the first 12 months of a brand new 2021 because they wanted to convince people that bought new sleds not to worry about COVID in terms of paying for the sled. And then on top of that, nice. they also gave everyone a $500 off their spring order. I got $500 off from BRP. Jeez. Wow. We didn't hear about anything like that here. <laughs> no. 
No. Richard, can you co-sign for me there on, on that or what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No deals on the 850. They're just more than the backcountry uh, than the backcountry XRS. Yeah. That makes well. I guess backcountry yeah. XRS. RS, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm surprised that there's yeah. a big price difference between the two. But if you if you look at four to six grand and five percent on that in a in a payment that's compounded, that's yeah. a huge savings to go up for the 800 with zero percent financing and let them carry your money, man. You know, and especially in the RMK, I'm, I bet they're going to move over to the uh, Matrix chassis next year. So if you get a uh, Axis in the 850 RMK, it's probably going to lose value in a year or two yeah. anyway. True. Sure. Sure. And then he says, so here's the real money question. Lay it on us. The suspense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, here's, here's my money tip for you. If you want to become a, a millionaire and own a skidoo, start with a billion dollars. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> that, is, that is for sure. Any, any snowmobile, any part yeah. of the sport, it gets expensive quick. Very oh, for sure. It's yeah, relative, I, though. Like it, it was more. I think it was more expensive before technology, before uh, Facebook, and you could go, "Hey, I'm looking for a a link can," and then you got like ten guys going, "I've got a link can. I'll sell you. It's collecting dust." Well, you had to go to the dealer before that, so you get one for seventy five bucks. You know. So well, yeah. On the other side of it, all the technology that's in the new sled has issues. Yeah. Yeah. Last year, my sled was at the dealership almost every weekend for the first two months of the season. Okay. Seriously? The engine light kept coming on. I was in Cochrane, and when the engine light comes on, it puts the machine in limp mode. So it ruined yeah, my Yeah, that business. sucks. Took it yeah. to three different dealers. None of them could figure it out. Took it to my dealer. They thought they figured it out. I take it on a ride. Same thing happens. Ended up, it needed a new wiring harness. Yeah. Which was very weird on a two-year-old sled. And yours is yours was the Skidoo, right? Yeah, it was an XRS 2018 850. You know what's crazy is is the players had the same issue. Um, it wasn't it was it was the wiring harness for some of them, but it was like it was also they had the pins were bent in in one of the part of the wiring harness. So if the pins were bent, it wouldn't have full connectivity, and, and you had to make sure like it wouldn't even run, and and it had to be good. It was for the fuel pump. It wouldn't even run the fuel pump. Yeah, and the worst part about it was the, the dealer told me they're like, yeah, the wiring harness isn't covered under the best could do warranty because they don't cover anything electrical but the dealer was nice enough to say you know the machine's been in here a lot you two years old there's no reason why the wiring harness should be going up for two years and they covered the cost on the dealer end which was nice Jeez, that's scary yeah yeah, so what, yeah. These warranties are not a comprehensive warranty there's lots of buying yeah. there, there's lots of things that they don't include nothing electrical is included but you know what? That's where a dealer makes a huge difference because if you don't get looked after like that, and it happens in all brands, but that just makes oh, yeah. you go, you know what? I'm going to Skidoo or I'm going to Polaris or I'm going, you know. So sure. that's yeah, a, yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah, huge yeah, on the dealers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I know. I know. Dealer. Rickwards is really, really good customer service. Obviously, they've been in business for a long time, right? Yeah, Rickwards, Polaris, and Kearney—they're great. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and not my Polaris for them. Yeah, exactly. So they're, you know, the cove, you're, you're over by closer to Perry Sound than Huntsville. And then you got to go to Bracebridge. So there isn't even a, a snowmobile dealership in Huntsville anymore. So Huntsville, from yeah. what I've heard from other people, is not the most friendly snowmobile city. In oh, it's not. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Steve's, Steve's, like Lindsay. Right in town. And whenever I have to get to the trail, which is on town line, which on a normal day, it's about a five minute snowmobile ride. Yeah. And it, it, yeah, you, you can feel people's eyes piercing through you. It's, 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 bad. it's so weird. It's so weird. But yet you got Bracebridge, Lin Dorset, Baysville. that are all Baysville that are all amazing to snowmobilers. But you go to Huntsville and it, it is, it's, it's weird. I, I've never yeah. seen such it, an anti snowmobile. Amazing. Know. Um, yeah, I've lived in Huntsville my whole <laughs> life, and it's always been like that. So, weird. very weird. Yeah, yeah. And they're they're That's losing a lot of money. A lot of oh, absolutely, because because all us diehard snowmobilers know that, and you you never plan to go into Huntsville. You'll go yeah. into Halliburton, Dorset, Dwight, Baysville, you know, whatever, right? So, but yeah. uh, 
Yeah, it's yeah. funny. We were saying that last year when we were riding through there. It's like even their trails. It's like let's try to make this the most, <laughs> you know, uncomfortable situation. Like yeah, coming yeah. into Huntsville so they don't come back, which to me is yeah. just asinine. But yeah. they're lost. It totally Do routes wanna, around it. Do you want a snowmobile club? I think. Yep. Do you want us up in there? Yeah. 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 And then I think uh, Port, City, Port Sydney's Hill and Gully. Hill and yeah, Gully, Hill bar and none. Gully. Bar none, the best, the best groomed trails ever. Uh, oh. I will put them again. Tall yes. Pines. Tall Pines, buddy. What's Hill and Gully. Tall Pines and Hill and Gully. Good too. Tall Pines. <laughs> They're pretty good. They're pretty in my good, opinion, but nothing beats polar bear riders in Cochrane. Their grooming is impeccable. But yeah, I, I, well, I don't I know. I'll, I'll got, find out at Christmas. You've got five thousand kilometers. Oh, you're coming up, great, man! You can't mess that. <laughs> oh, you're going up, Gary. Oh, you're going to bite the. I don't, I don't know. I have room for both the sleds in my trailer. I know. I know. That'd be good. I got a new job too, so it hey, that might not be an issue. Yeah, good. thanks, man. Yeah, so. Yeah, speaking of trailers, yeah. did uh, Bobby end up getting his trailer? Oh yeah, Good we did. Bobby. Yeah, <clears throat> nice. so we uh, we ordered it right before the end of September, and we should have it in December. We ended up going with a uh, four place Blizzard, so the non staggered one. Um, yep. We had to extend the like bed of the trailer by two feet because the riot is just too long where we could kind of fit them, but. We'd have to kind of mess with the sleds, so we didn't want to bother with that. Except the trailer two feet. Um, we got all the mats and the ski runners right. and all that stuff. And uh, we went with, like, a charcoal on the front and a dark blue on the back. So it should look pretty cool. It's a little different, nice. you know? Nice. Yeah. We that's should have good, it by That'll December. be a good video. Yeah, That'll I'm be a excited. good video, but that'll be good. Nice. Yeah, I got you know, know, Coda Bear. We're used to, used to seeing a lot of sleds and stuff, but, you know, seeing a trailer, what you need... Yep. You know, we haven't seen many videos of us, so that'll be good. That'll For be sure. nice. Looking forward yeah. to that. Thanks. I'm excited to post it. That's yeah. another thing that's getting overpriced again is trailers. That's Especially for sure. Especially in this area. It's, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I got well, the, I, my stepson has a machine now, so I'm looking for a trailer. And it, it's just it's mind boggling what people are asking mm -hmm. now. Yeah. It really yeah. is. We got lucky. We bought a, uh, my dad found a 2004 Roadmaster, not aluminum, but uh, we spent, I think, 4500 bucks on the trailer. And it was a full 23 foot trailer with front V9. Wow. Yeah. And we ended up putting in like two grand into it to like put lights in and put a flooring in. But at the end of the day, better than spending 12 grand on a brand new trailer. And yeah. So oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. That's why I went with the Avalanche. I, I, did, I did my homework on the, double bed and clothes and it was long and wide and it had all the led lights and it's great man i i you know what like i know again i'm not knocking them i know triton's you know they're the kind of cadillac of uh of trailers but i mean i i couldn't i couldn't justify you know the extra two to three grand more and i'm like what are you offering that's two to three grand more yeah like these other ones yeah. that these other trailers aren't so uh and i used it for a year and they were great i brought it back they re won over everything after the first year Great trailer. Couldn't, couldn't uh, be happy. Which trailer was that? Uh, it's called an Avalanche. They're they're built down in um, Amish country. Gotcha. Down down in, uh, where was that? I guess it was something River. River. Actually, but Forest yeah, River. Something River. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's it's great. Yeah. It's got the side door, and I don't know if Gary, you still have the what side door. Around. What oh, side? I don't want it's on my hard drive. Yeah. Oh wait, it, it, wait a minute. It's gonna be in here. Okay. You would have you would have emailed it, right? Yeah, I did email it to you there when we were doing the trailer show. But yeah, to what size was it? Was the was it a two place two foot or was it a bigger four place? No, it's a two place, but it's it was longer, right? So for like long track sleds. Yeah, like I have a twelve foot hybrid. Is what I yeah, have. Yeah, so it's it's basically uh, yeah, it's a hybrid, but it's uh, it's long. It's nice. It's got the side door. Yep, same as mine. Uh, it's yeah, no, it's it's a great trailer. I, I can't, uh, but I mean, you got to do your homework because you, you can spend a lot of money on those. But. They are expensive. Um, I got lucky. I ended up um, up north somewhere, actually, near Speculator, uh, near where Bobby rides. Um, I went up there and was able to get one that they had at a snow show, and they had it, uh, all the mats, everything in it, spare tire, all that stuff. They had it listed for forty nine nine five if you bought it at the show. I didn't buy it at the show, but I called them a month and a half later and I said, hey, listen, like I saw this at the show. This is where I you know, saw it. 
And they're like, well, you know, we can sell it to you for 5,500. And I was like, no, I want it for that price. And they worked with me and I was able to get it for 4,900, well, it was five grand basically. But yeah, awesome. it's, it's a nitro trailer, that's what it was. And you know, when you're looking at Blizzard or uh, what's the other big one, they're all like six, six to $6,500. Mm-hmm. And it was like, wow. I, can't, I can't see spending that much on a two place. You know? Yeah. It, now, where did you end up getting that nitro trailer? What about the nitro? Yeah, where, where did you end up getting the nitro trailer? Um, hold on, let me see. It was it was at it was in Speculator. I got it in my oh, notes. I know what you're talking about. Right. Mm-hmm. But there's 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 one dealer there's one dealer that actually is allowed to put uh, pressure treated uh, plywood for flooring. Other than that, they use that particle board. Yeah, I I don't think mine's the pressure treated. I can't remember. Maybe because was, have it there was a it. there was a couple dealers that were out towards Massachusetts nice. or Connecticut area. Yeah, and uh, they said they were the only one that was allowed to use pressure treated wood. They had an agreement with the manufacturer. Other than that, they they go with like a particle board flooring. Yeah, or whatever, what they call a board. yeah beaver puke. Nice we call that there. yeah. We call that beaver puke. The, <laughs> the beaver particle puke. board. Yeah, <laughs> the beavers eat all the wood and puke it up, and they throw glue in it, mix it around. And that's your flooring. <laughs> yeah, the. Uh, yeah, that's riches. So mine's very similar to that, except Village they don't have the Mandor gotcha. on the side. Yeah, mine yeah, that helps Village huge. Motorsports is where I got mine. Yeah. In, uh, that door oh, helps nice. huge for fueling up. Like I, I, it's, I love it. Huge. My yeah. sled is always on the left side. <laughs> yeah, me too. I all gas yeah. doors into my trailer so I could fill it. Yeah. yeah. Pull them out. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, guys, it's been a pleasure. I got to go, but uh, this has been Problem. great. Hopefully, we'll chat soon. Oh, yeah, for sure, Jesse. Like, let's uh, p- keep praying for snow, man, and good luck in school. Thanks, buddy. I'll talk to you guys later. Okay, take, take care. Take it man. easy. See you later, man. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I got to get uh, uh, I'll actually get Steve to send me a picture of his trailer. He's got a really nice one, too. It's longer. Um, it's a cool setup. I have to. I have to well, now they're cool. going to do it. For- they're doing like 13 foot two place trailers now like of the hybrids yeah, like yeah. they're and they, they're i think still in the four to five or like the five to six grand range um yeah, and nice. it's still a lot of money for a two place but you know the hybrid yeah. is just such a nice trailer to have yeah it is it definitely is american right yeah i did the clamshell for a while and i couldn't stand it i hated the clamshell yeah yeah it's one of those things man you know the worst like thing Bobby, about like, it. Like you're th- the worst thing about a clamshell is you're out riding all day and you come back and there's a foot of snow on it. You have to shovel it off to open it. You can't open yeah. it. It's yeah. stuck. It sucks. Yeah. yeah, mine used to freeze all the time. Mm-hmm. It used to freeze down. You know, yeah. so I love what the hybrid. About a clamshell. What, what no, t- the tilt, the tilt, and then the 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 shell pops up on the back and it's usually oh, got a strut. Yeah. But you have yeah. to duck your head in as you pull yeah. in, and and then yeah. it would if you don't have the shocks on it, it slams down, right? Just so thinking so about that thing hurts your back, man. That that's a backbreaker. Yeah. yeah, it's a it, 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 putting high, t- high height, right? So yeah. yeah, putting two sleds on it's a dance, for sure. Yeah. Well, you know? Bobby, your your old trailer doesn't owe you a thing, man. Like that thing was a good trailer to you guys, right? Yeah, and we, uh, with all its issues, we still got 3200 bucks for it, which, you know, I mean, That's awesome. all things considered, we were happy to get that, so. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Bobby, do you remember this? The first ride? Yeah, good times, man. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I remember that you were like, just lean back and gun it, man. You could catwalk it like me, and I'm yeah, like, dude, yeah. there's no way. I'm not going to be able to do that. <laughs> I, I, I never had a problem, but it's, I mean, I'm 100 pounds more than most people, so <laughs> I'm that extra weight. <laughs> I got that extra weight I can stand on it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah when you said you're in shape for uh, for uh, backcountry riding, the shape is not round, all right? It's not round. <laughs> Trust me, it's not. It's not. Uh, it's I'm not just busting all. your chops. It's fun. Yeah, yeah, it's getting that time good. of year, right? We're getting mid October now. Like other things will be starting to come in. You know, hey, one more month. New one clothing, month. helmets, and yeah. Yeah. I know uh, Castle X, they just released all their 2021 gear. Yeah. We don't have that brand up here very big. It's no, not well represented was, in Canada. I was yeah. looking for that up here. You couldn't, uh, 
Oh, yeah. Steve just emailed me. Is no, it's true, not. Thinking. It's not really. Like I, I heard it's more of. I think it's out west more. I mean, I actually don't even really see the dealers that much. I know up in Tug Hill, the guy has uh, some Castle X gear. Um, I'm trying to think what it. You remember, Bobby? Or you've only been to Tug Hill a couple times. That's one of the places I park. Uh, there's like a, a small shop, and he does his own things. Uh, I think Barrow's, Barrow's Performance. Yeah, Barrow's, Barrow's Performance. Like yeah, and he uh, he has stuff. I mean, he has Castle X and a bunch of other different uh, brands of gear and everything up there. So, but I like it. I mean, for the price, I couldn't go wrong. Yeah. 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 I good. sent you uh, Steve's trailer there. Hopefully, you can get it. Oh, there. cool. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'll get it's, it. It's it's a cool looking sled, man. Our trailer. I tell you what, they have a uh, a spring on the front door for the Blizzard trailers, and I kind of thought it was going to be useless. It makes you can't even tell you're opening a door. Like it's it weightless. That's nice. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. One finger. Yeah, that- yeah, literally. Yeah. The back door, yeah. not so much, but that front V nose door, absolutely. That's nice. It makes a huge difference when you got that spring there. For sure. Just man, when those springs go, it's like your garage door, right? Yeah. Like anything, you got to keep the maintenance on because if they go, you ain't going anywhere. Nope. <laughs> uh, Holy, no, you could good. shave. You could shave in Steve's sled. <laughs> in his trailer, oh, it's wow. yeah, it's that's a nice. Yeah. It's a nice trailer, man. I wish it's I, high, I, eh? You, it's yeah, tall. Oh, it's it's unreal, man. And if you, I sent you two there, Gary. If you'd see the, yeah, the how was it one below? Uh, oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, there, yeah. And it's um, it's really nice. It, it's uh, I'm trying to remember. He bought it at the snowmobile show, so. Oh, it's not. It must have been just a squish picture, because if you look at how close the ski guides are yeah, on it yeah. too, oh, that yeah, that looks more normal. But it's so way that, longer than mine. It's 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 a good foot or two yeah. longer than mine. Yeah, that's a, like, that looks like a sixteen foot. Yeah, yeah, it's like the yeah. same as that Triton that they've got. It's actually a knockoff yeah. of that, right? Isn't, yeah. isn't that yeah. a seven point five? It's only a seven and a half foot wide, or it's 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 nice. You know what? I'd have to. I wish he maybe he'll chime in here. He's in the. I think he's in the chat room because he heard me ask for it. So maybe he'll he'll chime in here now. I think it has to be a seven point five when the wheels are on the outside. That's, that's what I was thinking because of it. Because the yeah. width is too wide if the wheels if it's an eight foot. Um, yeah. All yep. the eight footers, you see the wheels and underneath. Yeah. It is sweet though. So I said to him, "I'll drive. I'll we'll take my truck, but we're taking his trailer." <laughs> so yeah. that's always the turn off. Yeah. yeah, it's a nice, nice trailer, man. It's a nice trailer. So, but uh, yeah, he got it at the snowmobile show, and uh, he got a pretty good deal at uh, last year. I think it was last year. Nice. That he ended up getting it, so. No, is that, that is that one of the ones that? Well, no, because it's seven and a half foot. I was gonna say you could probably fit three in there pretty easy. Oh, you, know, you turn the you, one. You turn the one backwards and, and slide yep. it up in. Yep, and I'm pretty sure yeah. you'd be able to fit three in there. So, but yeah. yeah, I don't know whether Cone wants in on the chat or not. I, he was off, but I, I don't know whether. Oh, here's Steve. What's he saying here? You pull that up there, Gary. You can see it. You're making me work tonight. It's a seven and a half <laughs> by sixteen hybrid. Sixteen. So, there we go. Here. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks, buddy. Uh, Wasn't Steve yeah. Jones in the monkeys? <laughs> Isn't that yeah. one of the monkeys? Yeah. Am I yeah, dating myself? Wasn't. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> or Mick Jones. Was it Mick Jones? Mick Jones. Yeah. yeah. Brian, there's a bunch of people trying to get Bobby to cough up what he bought <laughs> there. Oh, geez. He the said October. Oh, well, it's October. Yeah, you said it's October. Like Every time they get a shipment, I'm... I'm emailed yeah. him is mine on there is mine on there he said he's gonna yeah. email me with the shipping notification when he has it but so far <laughs> bite your nothing. tongue buddy <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah 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 we just I gotta have, keep we gotta I, keep richard uh richard under wraps here yeah and, right <laughs> i did say sweet man if you heard me I, you know, <laughs> but you gotta tell him to hurry up bob because it's pissing me off otherwise i'm gonna end up spilling yeah. the beans i almost <laughs> slipped earlier so i can't blame you yeah, 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 that's yeah. right. That's why when you guys asked me earlier, I was like, mm, I don't want to say it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. I feel yeah. yeah, yeah. So, hopefully, yeah, hopefully right. everything everything works. Um, I actually just found out that uh, I am losing my job November thirtieth. So we will oh, see. Oh, that's too what bad, going on. buddy. Yeah. It's awful, man. Yeah, yeah so I'm we'll see. We'll see how this works out. I'm gonna try to still do it, and hopefully, I can still get riding. I mean, I gotta see what happens. Really, you know, I never would have thought Coca-Cola would shut down our facility, but you know, there we are. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, it's like, you know, I it's did. like GM in Oshawa. They were there for 125 years, and it was like back in Flint, Michigan, way back in the U.S. I remember that Roger and Me movie, and mm-hmm. they did the exact same thing to Oshawa. They, they at one point, um, GM employed 38,000 people yeah. at that plant. So, that was yeah, no, it's crazy. Place. It's crazy. Yeah. Brian, Brian, Brian Dobson said he's trying to be low key here at work. Hey, hey. <laughs> but yeah, no, I I feel for you, Coda, because I, I I I had my own, my own business for. 15 years going on 16 years in trade shows and special events okay, and yeah. uh i my wife said you've got the summer when when we are shut down and no no trade shows and well i i'd travel yeah, north yeah. america right and she said you got the summer and we both sat there with our fingers crossed hoping for better news and fall comes and there's Still no nothing. news yeah and it's going to be for my world it's going to be years to to recover so um I, I've, I'm going to keep the business going. I've, I still do a lot of websites and things that don't pay the bills, clothing and things mm-hmm. of that nature. But um, I, I took a job as a business solutions technician for the county here. So um, that I'm excited to get my hands in that because it's there going to be go. doing live streaming and, and things like this. So, Tech savvy. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't so know what I'm going to do. I don't. I yeah. just found out last week. and. You know, we'll see what happens. Uh, I mean, I have my CDL. I mean, that's what I was doing with them. But I live in an area that there's not a lot of options. So we'll, we'll go and see from there. Wow. Wow. Are you are you open to travel as well if you had to move to to find work? I, uh, I just got a lease. and Otherwise, I would have probably moved a little closer because I could have kept my job, but I would have had to go an hour and a half north. And so I would have maybe moved like 45 minutes north and, you know, stayed somewhat close to family and everything still. But uh, being that I just got a lease, I can't really just drop it and go, you know, literally wow. last month, literally last month. So, it, it, yeah. you know, 2020 has been such a bad year, <laughs> such a bad year. I'm over yeah. it, man. Like with yeah. everything yeah. going on and I sold my wheeler, I sold my four wheeler. I didn't make any videos this, this summer because we didn't. We couldn't for a while. You couldn't do anything, like you know. And I didn't want to oh. be that guy to go and break it and, like, you know, go out to places you weren't supposed to go because of COVID and all this other stuff. So the four wheeler sat and sat and sat, and then I finally could go. But I just, I also wasn't working as much, so I wasn't making the money. You know, no, the finances no. weren't there. So I was like, I can't, I can't, I gotta sell it. I want well, to sell snowmobiling, and that's yeah. what I really, I, that's what I enjoy is snowmobiling. So I, I, I wanted to focus on that this year. And you have a family as well, right? Uh, I have a woman, you know, dog, no no kids or nothing. Else. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. No, I, I have a family as well, so even the bike, I didn't do anything this summer because I actually felt guilty riding it. You know, mm-hmm. like, like you can't, you can't waste time. I tried to keep busy at work. Like, I tried to do as much as I could to, to bring in, to generate income, but, you know, the reality is it's, you know. It's hard. It's, there's there's nothing you know no. and it's a you know i the, the last two weeks has been really tough because it's my been my busiest time of year like mm-hmm. i would never be i would be like a one arm paper hanger um you yeah, know toward, you, you just directions yeah exactly but having fun with it you know and and traveling and you know working with my crew like i had a crew of guys that, that i'd hire to do the jobs and working with them and it's like that there's that one country song i don't know that you guys listen to the country about the six feet apart and he he says yeah. about uh, going out no with calls. beers with his buddies yeah. Yeah. yeah and it's like it's like that's exactly when i think about work when i hear that song you know because it's like you know when the events come back and it's like going out to lunch and and with the boys and and you know i i, I like well, i liken that to the, my crew you know and i mean it's 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 tough i mean it's it's tough for everybody and i didn't think the u.s was that uh, that's the stereotype that that we have in canada is i we we hear the u.s is being not not following protocol and not you know playing they by the now. rules and they are and, now yeah. i can play that but I, yeah. at first when it first uh took over i mean that, let's be real there's always gonna be rule breakers i mean that's just always how it is but the first like I don't know, Bobby, what do you think? Three to four months, it was pretty strict. Everything was shut down. You couldn't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, but New York, uh, as far as the United States goes, has been a lot more strict with like. Yeah, that's where we live. So. Shutting stuff down. So, 
you know, in the in like the, the Midwest and stuff, a lot of people haven't worn masks and they're kind of seeing spikes now. But here it's been, you know, we've been heavy on the rules and relatively under control because of that. Yeah, okay. because, yeah. Of, because of New York City, basically, is what it, what it ended up going from. Yeah. But like Bobby said, I mean, literally for probably four months, like we couldn't do anything. And then when we finally opened up, like dude, there's people getting fines. There's a whole bunch of people that are getting and everything for not wearing masks. Like even, you know, down Main Street in my town, like you could get a thousand dollar fine for not having a mask. Like, like yeah. they're yeah. very, very strict about it. And it's, you know, I get it. I get it. But it, it sucks, you know. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, the, the, uh, like, and because you and you and I basically lost our jobs due to COVID, uh, we were up North and we're, we just take a cruise, me and my wife and my daughter and just to see some sights. So we went to Burke's falls and that's where we snowmobiled last year, Jeremy. And I took the Jeremy didn't go there with us, but we were going to go there with him. But, uh, the weekend before I went with Mike and I took my family there to show Burke's falls cause it's pretty cool. And you can walk right across a little uh, covered bridge over the falls and then we went there's a place called screaming heads it's a concrete place and it's just like three kilometers away and we're going there and my wife goes oh it's closed due to covid and i went oh my buddy mike knows the owner and he said i guess that's why he told me if i ever wanted to go let him know because he knows the owners he'd take us in and i said we'll just go by and see it we're right there like we're three kilometers away or whatever three miles away and we drive in and the guy's got this it's it's his own private property. He doesn't charge admission. He lives there, okay? It's a big, what it would be, a 100-acre field, and he's got these huge concrete structures, like like hands sticking out of the ground, a great big face, ah, like that. And he's got all these different sculptures, like massive, all through this, this area. And every fence gate has closed due to COVID, closed due to COVID, no, do not enter. And the place was packed. Like really? both sides, both sides of the road over the hill, cars parked. It's like, do you guys not get it? Like, like it, I felt so bad for humanity after that because one, one, it's not even like it's it's government property that you're, you're on this guy's private property, and, he and he's old. Him. He's old. He's probably ninety years old, and he's he has to be worried about COVID, right? And then you're just walking right in there willy nilly. And like it's like it's open territory, you know, and it's like it's so sad, you know, well, so it, sad. It, it's been like that up here all summer. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, people, you know, they don't want to be in the cities. So mm -hmm. where do they go? They go to their cottage and, you know, they're, um, yeah, you know, well, Huntsville's, you know, we got 15 to 18,000 people. The population tripled in the summer. So yeah. now, um, now things are spiking here in Muskoka. So yeah. it, it's scary, right? Like I'm, um, I'm used to a small town, and anyway, um, at the dealership, we we got to wear masks all day. Yeah, yeah. There, there's just no, no ifs ands or buts about it, and that, if that's what I got to do, that's what I got to do. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I did that I, at a restaurant. I worked at a restaurant. Still do. I got two shifts tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night and the next day and Saturday. And and we have to wear a mask the whole time. And this guy comes in, sits at the table closest to the door, basically. And he's bitching to me. Oh, this mask. How do you, what do you think? Do you hate wearing these? I hate wearing these. I'm like, buddy, you had to walk from the freaking car to the closest table, the door. Mm -hmm. And then you can take your mask off. I've been here all day with this stupid thing on. Yeah. I didn't say that to him, but that's what I'm thinking. You know, like yeah, I, I'm not allowed to say. Job. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. I'm not allowed to say that. But it's like, it, it, it set me back. So I'm going like, buddy, like, you know, do you realize who you're talking to? Like, think before you speak. Yeah, no kidding. Eh? You know, so a lot of people don't care. They don't get it. They, they don't have to wear it. I mean, a lot of them are just living off the system. You know, they just, they do whatever, whatever they want. They like, I, I work 10, 12, 14 hour days sometimes. And so I got to wear the mask, but luckily, you know, I get out of a store. I take that thing right off. You know, I get some yeah. air, like, cause yep. it, it's bad. It's bad. It's, it, it's gotta be, it's gotta be harder with a beard. I think it is. is it? Yeah. yeah. I trimmed yeah. it down a while ago. You can't tell now, but when we first yeah. started having to wear the mask and everything, I trimmed it all down. So I could actually breathe because it was bad. 
Yeah. Wow. I'm a smoker, so I get to go outside and take the mask off. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put cut a hole in it, and then you're right through the hole. <laughs> yeah, it defeats the purpose. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, Tammy. Tammy makes them, right? My girlfriend. So she she makes nice. them. Nice. And uh, nice. They're they're comfortable. The ones that that she made me, they're they're custom made for me. So it doesn't seem so bad, right? So yeah, that's right. That's right. No, it's a, I did, I've done a lot of masks, especially like with the brands on them and, and to the U.S. now. And the, I was getting a lot of emails. Hey, can you send them to the U.S.? It's like, I don't know. So finally, that, that girl that was that I had pictures of from Becky, I said, you know what? If you want to take a gamble, don't pay for them until they arrive at your door. And then you can pay me for the masks. And then she and I because I just wanted to try it to see if they'll go get across the border on regular yeah. mail. And it was fine, and and everyone else I've sent it to within a week um, after shipping, they get them in a week, and uh, I went, that's perfect, you know. So, yeah, that's good. can't go wrong. Yeah. So well, yeah. What do we got? I don't know. Hoping it's done before snowmobile season, so we actually can get out and do stuff. Yeah, yeah. We, the, our government closed down all the hotels and resorts, and so the OFSC Quebec closed the trails first, and then the OFSC closed it. Um, close them shortly thereafter and everybody was bitching at the OFSC that it's they close the trails no they didn't it's it's yeah. there there's not there's nothing to do you can't go and pee like you can't if you're a female snowmobiler especially there's no restaurants to go in and have a squirt or whatever or, you know so it's like it doesn't even make sense you know even to um, get <laughs> yeah so on a positive note Jumpman24 wants to know if we have any glove recommendations for cold weather riding riding i'd like that i'd like the the answer to that question as well so i got some i got some answers for you because my hands okay. do get cold a lot i'm buying those fxr heated gloves the ones that have the battery packs in them and they they work excellent you wear them with They're, your uh with your heated bars too yeah yeah where, yeah, I, where nice. I where i ride it gets cold uh, way up north. Uh, I ride up by uh, Malone, New York, and, uh, and north of that. And sometimes in the morning when we start out, it's like 30, 35 below. So the wind chill, yeah, it's, it's yeah, crazy. It, yeah, it gets cold, yeah. so, and, you know, with some of the windshields that come on the sleds now. <laughs> no protection. Yeah, I don't, no protection. I don't care what kind of uh, uh, hand warmers you got. still... So I bought those FXR. Uh, I want. I can't think of the name of them, but they are made by FXR, and they got little battery packs. They last probably about six, eight hours. Um, huh. A little bit longer if you run them on low, but they got three settings. Yeah, I, I worked outside for the last five years, so um, the cold, the cold never bothered me, right? So I, I, I work inside now, so I'm, I'm thinking. I, I might not be a, as adapted to the cold as I was um, last winter, so just uh, just curious. I, I've been trying a few on, and I'm like, uh, I, I'm really fussy with, with my stuff, right? So just thought maybe somebody had uh, recommendations. I got big hands too, so yeah, um, Cl- you you can never go wrong with climb gear. Um, yeah. I you know what I do? I run I run the head gloves you get at Costco. Um, and I just control my handlebar heat and then the really cold days I have the muffs that slide over and they're yeah. fur lined from Skidoo and I just run the the, uh, the Apple touchscreen gloves like the thin they're just thin cotton with the like the touchscreen fingertips and you can run your handlebar heaters on low all day in like minus 35 minus 40 wind chill and it's not an issue like the handlebar muffs are the key you know so um, some people think they look old manish, but you know what? They, <laughs> you're warm. You're warm. I heard you in know. Canada you got those mile wide trails for you know 50 miles straight. You're gonna need them gloves. Yeah, well, actually, we're that's Cochrane areas, more like that, uh, and Quebec's like that. Um, but where where Jeremy and I ride mostly is is a lot of and even Cohen, a lot of tight twisty you know a lot of forest and then when you get on the lakes they're wide open and you you can go full speed on those 
but uh, yeah, yeah I, I find I'm a more physical rider anyway in the trails I throw myself around a lot so I tend Probably. to stay warm right so you know and same with my boots like I'm the most frugal snowmobiler out there my jacket I bought at a, a bargain bin at the snowmobile show it's a ski do coat <laughs> and the uh, the my tech vest I bought used my pants I bought FXR the no tax royal tent sale end of season clearance type thing um, you know what I mean like like my boots are are snowboarding boots and they work great they got the boa system on them and I love the boa and, system yeah a buddy of mine gave me his uh Cho choco usa boots yeah. with the yeah. boa and and i wore them for uh, one or two seasons and they were but size too big and i went these are my snowboard boots why don't i just wear them so my i threw my burtons on the next year and i never turned back you know and the boa is warranted warranted for life too so and you can let, let's compare it you can get a pair of snowboard boots for like 120 bucks good ones you pay three four hundred dollars for a pair of of fxr boas you know what i mean like like if you do the math on it right yeah so. i think i paid 200 ish for my uh castle x boots and they have the boa system i love it i love yeah. it you can put your boots on and off in literally like 30 seconds it's yeah for sure and and just a tip on the bow boa if if you buy a boot set of boots like that claim the warranty right away so you have the extra dial on hand you won't have to wait for it to ship and gotcha. they'll they'll send you two a year or something like that. Uh, there's a limit that you can order them, but the uh, yeah, make sure you order them ahead. So because I find with the skidoo, I bang the the, bang. the bang it against the console, it breaks the it breaks the dial. You can stick it back in manually and get it like it'll spring out, and then you just push it back in, and mm -hmm. once it's tightened up, it'll stay in. But uh, yeah, like I I always do that. I had shrink wrap around my boot the one year to hold it in and. But you can't beat work. the comfort. Yeah, and I mean, you go to a restaurant, you push the button, it they go, they un, they, the the tongues on loose, and you can walk around in them. So, yeah, it's really nice. So, did uh, hey Bobby and Coda, did you see where they uh, got the approval to pull up the railroad tracks all the way up to Lake Placid? I didn't see that. They were working on it for a while. Yeah, it got the, it was approved. It said it's going to take like two years, but they they got like a wow. thirty something mile. Yeah, I always just need that. Now we just need that section between uh, Norridge Walk and uh, Charlie's yeah. area. That's yeah. awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah that would be good, eh? Especially, it's going to be multi-use. I wonder if they'll let, like... Yeah, it's multi-use. Like, yep. Yeah, nice. Yeah, they're nice. they're going to do, like, mountain biking in the summer. and Yeah. Awesome. yeah. So what do you guys Ryan, think about uh, extended deer season? I don't like that. Yeah, I... I'm I'm a hunter, really? but I rather ride. Like you know, there's long enough hunting season. We only get a short riding season. It already kind of cuts in depending on where you are. If you get like a good snow towards the end of December, you know, it, you already lose a ride or two. It doesn't really take any longer. Sometimes we end, up losing, we end up losing trails too because of that. Because we get People good riding, riding so and they can't they can't wait. Yeah, it ends up it's up. They end up upsetting a landowner, and we end up losing a trail. Yeah, down by me, uh, it's usually anywhere between, anywhere between like the 18th of December, 19th of December, all the way up to like right before Christmas, like 23rd, 24th. Yeah. The trails won't open. It's usually I think it's the third week in December. Uh, so technically, like the fourth week, they clo they open down here, and oh. like you get a good snow in early December, a nor'easter comes up the coast, you get dumped on two feet, you can't ride, and, yeah. and it's oh, that would suck. You know, maybe a good lake effect where Tug Hill gets like three feet and we get the bands down lower, like, you know, yeah. above me a little bit. We still can't ride. And it's terrible. We had a couple, two, three feet storms a couple of years ago and we couldn't ride. And there's people out there riding and we almost lost trails because the trails were in. Oh, oh my God. People were yeah. Hunting. yeah, it was bad. Yeah, now, so they're going to extend it. So they push it into January. They're talking yeah, about first, extending first it another January. week. Yeah. yeah wow. They said first of January, the trails will open. Down Muskoka, Muskoka is a little bit similar, like the area I'm in, because you'll get a dumping on, but the swamps won't freeze, and then the groomers can't go over it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. the The deer season in in like Muskoka area is first, like the second week in November, because we went we went ATV in up in Kearney, 
and it was Halloween, and I think on November 2nd, the deer season had started, so there was, like the ATV trails were all closed in there, but you're really not riding here till, you're lucky if you get out before New Year's here. Um, usually it's third week of January for OFSC trails. We, we bomb farmer's fields and stuff in this area, but if there's it's snow, but yeah, it's late, yeah. I figure yeah. Canadian, wow. Canada, you figure early December. So yeah, no. Sure. Well, Cochrane uh, Cochran will open up. Cochran. The one year everybody went nuts because even Barry opened like Christmas. I remember being like Christmas Eve, doing my last minute shopping or the day before Christmas Eve with my son and all the trails like like Barry, um, uh, uh, Meaford, Collingwood, and North, they're all opening up and before Christmas. And that was basically unheard of we were lucky you know and but they closed right after that we had rain come in the between christmas and new year so they closed 50 degrees rain yeah 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 so you're no stranger to it for sure down here last year that was every week (laughs) every week yeah well that's the sad part is we get we'll get a dump of snow and then then it goes warm and it rains for a couple of days and now you got to start all over again yep yeah exactly exactly Oh yeah, I stake for my clubs. I stake trails that never, they they might not ever open. You know, like it's uh, down in southern Ontario here where I am, and it's you know, and they they do open if they open a, a a day or three days a year or four days a year. I think last year they were open like about five days in combination. Um, so we got pretty lucky last year. But there, when I was up north and we were having a banner time up north, lots of snow, and then. I came home, that was two years ago. I All my buddies were out doing these big rides down here. And I'd like to ride here if I can, you know, leave from home and, mm-hmm. and do, do two, 300 kilometers, you know, like 200 miles, you know, a ride and just from your back door basically. And and then I, I, I said to Drew, we gotta get home. So we left Huntsville and it was like a, it was like marshmallows. Like it was deep, pristine grooming. And by the time we got home on the Sunday, I went out with the boys and it was bare, like blown off and packed because everybody and their brother was out riding. So it was it was hard on the sleds, hard that's, on parts. That's uh, down here. I uh, I actually was going to post a video of it, but I was like, yeah, I don't know if I want to show that. I rode my SKS down here, eight inches of snow, you know, we're riding me and my dad and, and everything, beaver dams blown out. So you got water and everything and i'm wheeling the sks across the water and but it, it, oh, you know, God. it's hard on the sled i mean the lugs you know they got beat up um but the sled stayed really cool i was very shocked but everyone's out like there was i passed so many sleds and there was like yeah. eight inches of snow but you'd love love to see it um you know to ride local you know your own trails your own people you know your buddies you know get out and just ride local you know you yeah, come home love- work just get out yeah, there's, and there's something about it like when i'm when i leave from home and it's at night my son and i will go out first time we the trails open near here we might have to trailer for 10 minutes and and be in the next small town and unload and and uh, hit the trails and, but you go out and there's those nights you see you know 50 sleds and it's like oh it's like everybody's waving and it's so good but you do it up north too but it's different down here because it's so rare you know Mm -hmm. it's hard to it's hard to describe well one of bobby's best videos is he was riding his local trails on the power lines and having fun and you know and he's you know helping out his people in his area and it's it's awesome you know it's the best feeling yeah yeah i love it i love it What's the, uh, Bruce Stewart wants to know what the longest ride anyone's ever done in one day. 318 miles for me. Got me beat. <laughs> mine was 220. Yeah, mine was 214, I think. That's 500 kilometers for me. That's not, no, that's, I, I, I haven't done that in a day. Um, I've probably done a 300 kilometer day, but not mile. I think, I think mine's 220, 220. Yeah. yeah beat after 200 miles man just holding the yeah. throttle beat. <laughs> beat. Yeah. yeah yeah that's that's 500 kilometers for us in canada 318 miles so that's a big I've done, day i've done 700 miles in two days in two days yeah there you go yeah. that's a lot of riding yeah. 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 yeah yeah well that's the guy that i ride with that's all we do we we go for 
we go for miles. We'd only stop once for lunch, but we're 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 just you know because the season's so short, we get out and ride. We don't stop, you know, on yeah. fuel, and we grab something to eat real quick, and then we're back on the trails. But we plan big loops, and some of these big loops we'll ride. Uh, we'll take off maybe from a local trail and then ride all the way up to uh, um, almost to Canada, and then shoot over to like towards Lake Lake Champlain. Do a big loop around that way. You, we'll do like 350 in a day. Wow. Yeah, that, that's yeah. where your 900 Ace Turbo is going to really come into play for you, right? Sure, that's crazy. Yeah, that's a uh, that's built for that that uh, that type of riding, right? My my 600 has got 5,300 miles on it. My 18. Nice. All right, guys. Well, it's uh it's about 10 o'clock for me, so I got to get up early. Yeah, it's work. same here. Same here. You want to shut her down, Bobby? It's uh. Two 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 and a half hours. It's a big one. <laughs> Record set for us. Yeah, we can wrap I her up. I think so. I called it when it started. I said, this is going to be the top session so far. There you go. Yeah, it's been good. I hope everyone has enjoyed it. It seemed to fly yeah, by. Nice. I mean, Definitely. and like I said, I, I love the sharing the photos and stuff. I think that's uh, that's one of the best parts of this for me, for sure. I'll you definitely know. send you some for for next week. So this is it. It's every Tuesday, right? I, I've seen it pop up. I just I mean, Mon- Monday or Tuesday, and we'll try and put it out a day beforehand, um, yeah. or, or two days beforehand, if I if I can. Um, it, but it's Monday or Tuesdays. We've been doing it. Um, yeah. We're going to try and get on a better schedule. I think with my new gig, I, I'm working Tuesday nights doing um, live shoots, uh, but. Uh, so it might have to switch to Monday. And we were talking that we think Monday might be a good night after a weekend of snowmobile and everybody's home and we can, we'll have stories to share, you know, that type of thing, right? Yeah. So, and photos and stuff too, so. Well, it was yeah. nice talking so, with you guys. Yeah, yeah nice. Coda, it was great great meeting you, buddy. Nice to meet yeah. you too. Yeah. Nice Bobby, the best. Hopefully this year we can at least get together at least once up in Old Forge, show me around again. Absolutely, mm-hmm. man. Or Tug cool, Hill. Man. Now that I got a better trailer, hopefully we'll move around a little more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hopefully my situation doesn't keep me from doing it. So, man. yeah. Keep keep your head up and keep looking, man, because there is work out there. Yeah. Um, you just got to find it, right? So, and you know what? You might have to be. You might have to take a a lesser job to just to keep the the bills just paid and the, yeah, get you on the trails. So you know, there's there's always something. It's just uh, what what do I want to do? You know. Yeah, I don't want to work yeah. something where I'm going to be miserable every day. You know? so. No, exactly, exactly. Hey, but the sleds put a smile on your face. Right? Exactly, I love it every. <laughs> Gotta be Polaris though. Can't be Sudo. That's, that's Can't be I know. <laughs> yeah, nothing wrong with it. Nothing right. wrong with it. All right, boys. Well, let you, everybody's entitled to their opinion, Coda yes, Bear. Yes, that is that is true. <laughs> <laughs> true. All right, guys. So, thanks a lot, guys. You guys are great tonight. Yeah. Just uh, stick or, stick around because I'm going to run the credits and there's there's two more videos that we think Bobby Bobby and I think you guys might enjoy, so stick around after the uh, the uh, the credits roll and then um, click those links and let us know what you think. Cheers, guys. Thanks again. Later. It's a journey for